Good morning. Welcome to Sewing Street. How is everybody this morning? Um, tired. I must say, Kat, you should feel absolutely fresh as a daisy. She says I haven't got to nine o'clock yet. She's feeling a bit sleepy this morning. But how is everyone? It's lovely to have your company. Thank you for tuning in. It's really lovely vibes in the office today. It's really nice. I've only got one hour where I'm here on my own and then we've got a jam-packed show for you. Whenever Rebecca Reed is here, it's always just... <laughs> yeah, manic, manic. That's the word I was looking for. I was just thinking, like, it's all just lovely and zesty and, 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 and lovely. We're really excited for today's show. I've got Cara Ackerman uh, and we've also got Rebecca Reed. Uh, we've got Amber Makes and we've got some amazing Helen Newton products. As soon as they arrive in on pre-order, let me know. Oh, they are. Right. Please, please know um, that the... Amber Makes isn't yet on pre-order. As soon as it is, I'll tell you. But the Helen Newton Free Motion Cushions are already selling on pre-order. They're already selling on pre-order. Um, the potting shed is the most popular at the moment. But we've also got the sewing room. Honestly, I'm so pleased that we've got 200 of each of these because they are absolutely amazing. And um, you know when you just think, oh, every single one every single one of us has got to have these and have a go at them this is a, a really really lovely project uh, and they they look amazing how is everybody ellen's there good morning vicky and team uh glennis good morning derek's watching derek i looked through your song list yesterday and it is right up my street so i've set my alarm for monday night i'm so excited it's gonna be brilliant right today's early bird now we don't need to do this as an early bird i said to hannah I said to producer Hannah that um, we had this as an early bird and she said, why? And I said, what do you mean, why? And she says, why was that an early bird? There is no need for this to be an early bird. Rebecca Reed just said, this sells out every single time it's on air. What we've done is we've managed to get a huge, huge quantity and we've d cut me to pieces. So you're going to be able to make loads of face coverings with this and we've discounted the price. So go for it if you want to open your order nice and early and it's going to be a very very busy day loads going on so you definitely want to open the uh the order nice and early i know that we uh, had a guest coming in at eight o'clock last time that we had it and um we didn't spend we spent a couple of minutes on it and i think 600 or 700 units sold so please be aware this always sells very 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 quickly um it's a whole meter piece this is only half of it let me show you so this is your Visaline, uh, official Visaline face light, face mask interliner. So basically, if you're making any of our face masks, if you're making any of the panels that Rebecca Reed's designed for us, um, you're going to be able to make seven, in fact, 14 face masks. Um, this won't be the lining of it. This will be what's in between your two layers of fabric. If you want to be, you know, extra, extra safe by having three layers in your face coverings, then this is the product that Visaline recommend. Because it's not woven, you can cut it whichever way you want. So you can really make it go a long way. And as I said, you'll be able to make 14 face coverings, enough for two weeks worth of face coverings. And let's face it, Ellie and I were talking about it this morning. That it isn't going away any time soon. We are going to be wearing face coverings uh, for the foreseeable, aren't we? And now you want one for spring, you want one for different outfits when we are able to go out or if you're going on uh, on walks, it's nice to have the ones that match in with your outfit now. Uh, and I think you notice, don't you? It just makes you smile when you've got one that's a beautiful, uh, you know, print that's perfect for spring or one that's really nice and smart to go with your work outfit. Or it's, it's nice to gift for people as well. If you've got a special fabric that you love from Tula or Cave, so if you're using your cotton fabrics, now don't get me wrong, I know our face coverings um, that Rebecca Reed has designed are exclusive ones. Uh, they, they aren't um, medical grade, but they do meet all of the guidelines for, for the, the safety of, of you know, your face coverings. So if you do, as I say, want to be extra safe and have and have that extra layer of protection. The reason why it's so great and that Vi uh, Visaline actually recommend this as their interliner 
is because of the fact that you can wash it up to 60 degrees, you can chuck it in the wash time and time again. I know a lot of face coverings that have the little pockets that you can put a liner into it if you want to, then this is brilliant for that as well. Uh, if you uh, if you are buying multiple, it comes pre-cut into meter pieces. It comes pre-cut into meter pieces like this. Four pounds and 98 pence. It's saving one pound today. It's saving one pound today. Those of you that haven't yet bought this, now is the time. Now is the time. It's always very, 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 very popular indeed. Check out as soon as you can. Morning Vix, Kat and Elliot. Glad to hear you like next Monday's song list. That's Derek. Oh, it's brilliant. Oh, brilliant. Hi there, everyone. I had my COVID vaccine yesterday. Alan did. Um, still, I'm not sure why you can't hear me on the TV. Can everyone else hear me? Welcome, Sam. You'll be hooked, Summers just said. Um, oh, where's Sam? Oh, here we go. Sam Wilson said the first time watching. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you very, very much for your message. Glennis said good morning. It's, it's brilliant to wake up nice and early with us because this is where you get the bargains. And those of you that are waking up with us early, you only pay one postage and packaging with us all day long. Morning, Vix. I woke up at 6 a.m. today. I don't know why, it's so annoying, but I'm glad to see you, Pauline. Oh, Pauline, know the feeling. Even on uh, my days off now, even if I'm not here, I'm always wide awake at five o'clock. It's just my body clock's changed now. Um, how is everybody? Come and say hello. Bernadette, say good morning, everybody. Love B, lovely to have your, uh, your company. So, remember, you're getting one whole metre, one metre of your official Visaline product um, for, for only £4.98. That's such a good price, isn't it? You can wash it up to 60 degrees. Perfect to use in, in your uh, lining of your, your face coverings. As I said, you need it in between two cotton, uh, two cotton layers, but it will just give you that extra protection. I know a lot of the sort of pre-made ones now, they have the little pouches, little pockets, don't they, that you can slide your lining in and out if you do want, as I say, that extra, extra protection. But this is the official Visaline product that they recommend as the fabric face mask, uh, as the face mask uh, interlining. It should not be an early bird. It really should not be an early bird. Um, good morning, everybody. Morning, Linda. How is everyone? We've got a jam-packed day today. Jam-packed day. Should we have a look at what's coming up? Keep checking out on this. I'll keep reminding you all day. We'll talk about it with Rebecca uh, because I know that she launched it. Um, but that's a brilliant saving as well today. A saving of... Well, Every, every penny counts, doesn't it? An extra pound off, especially for something that is an essential at the moment. Our face coverings are essential, so why not make our own? Uh, now, today's show looks a little bit like this. We've got dressmaking fabrics this first hour, some that I've never seen before as well. Some really, really lovely ones. Um, and it is my only hour on my own. So come and talk to me, come keep me company. Uh, if you've got any questions or any messages, get them in this hour at nine o'clock. Wait until you see these. Can we have a little look at these gorgeous cushions? The sewing room one's up at nine o'clock. And then at 11 o'clock, the potting shed. Potting shed is already very, very popular. This one's nine o'clock. We're gonna talk through how you create these beautiful cushions. Wouldn't they be amazing gifts? And you can personalize them. You could put, you know, someone's garden, you could put somebody's name on there. You can personalize it to, um, to your sewing room or what you like. Put your house, num house number. On the little bird house cat saying you can put your house number on. Absolutely, this is brilliant. So that's at eight and eleven. In between that, troubles here. Rebecca Reed is going to be joining us at ten o'clock. Have you got the photographs yet, cat? Because the bags are amazing. The quotes are gorgeous as well the quotes that um that you'll see on these bags are brilliant so rebecca's so excited she's designed these bags look 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 look. my soul is fed with needle and thread so much fabric so little time and on the inside in the lining i'll talk about it with rebecca but there's 
hilarious quotes as well. Lovely sewing quotes. You're going to love it. I told you, trouble is here. She's um, she's in and out of the studio, just waving at us, waving at us like mischievous, very mischievous. So that's coming up later on. And then Yarn Lane at 12 o'clock. You asked me where my microphone is. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, it's just there. Yeah, fine. Um, we've got at 12 o'clock, Yarn Lane. Now, uh, Rebecca Reed's booted me off because she says, I've got to do this show. I am so excited about this granny square jumper. She says, I've got to, I've got to do the show because I really want to do it myself. Um, I'm going to come on and, uh, and have a look at them as well. I really want to try it on because uh, Esme on the celebrity special of Great British Sewing Bee, she was wearing like a granny square jacket style jumper, wasn't she? Uh, so I don't know whether you've seen it on our Facebook. I think Amy's put a picture of it up. Definitely have a look because we're going to be doing beautiful kits at 12 o'clock on Yarn Lane. Now, this hour, where shall we start, Kat? We've got patterns, we've got fabrics. Let's go for some brand new jersey fabric. Now, I adore this. Do you know, I'm obviously um, getting closer to finding out if I'm having a boy or a girl, but these are amazing for... I think like little leggings for even like um, little dungarees would be so cute, little hoodies. It's absolutely adorable, absolutely adorable. So you've got by the half meter, your dinosaur jersey and exactly what you need for children's clothes is nice stretchy fabrics lovely stretchy fabrics um, going to be able to wash beautifully as well and how cool is this because you've got the multi-direction you don't need to worry about placement too much if you're thinking of doing little leggings what about like um, a hoodie, like a hooded top? This would be really nice for a hoodie as well. And it's so, 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 so soft. Four pounds, 49 and a half metre. Half a metre is extra wide. I'm talking about children. Elliot's sitting in the gallery going, I want a dinosaur hoodie. <laughs> She's got, she is sassy today. Sassy Sue in the gallery just said, Elliot, I don't think we've got enough fabric to be able to cover you today. We've only got two and a half. Oh, fair enough. Two and a half metres. Two and a half metres left. And it's brand new in today. Very, very popular this morning. Very, very popular. Oh, Elsa has been up since 4.40 this morning. Um, Elsa, what were you doing up at 4.40 this morning? Um, looking forward to today's programme with Helen's Free Motion Kushiwakara. Oh my gosh, they are gorgeous. The sewing room and the potting shed are already on pre-order. And just so you know... Potting shed in the lead at the moment. They are both selling already though. First one's the sewing room coming up at nine o'clock. So do make sure you're checking out on that one. Morning from Australia. Oh, Sharon. Sharon, cat can't talk to you at the moment. She's supposed to be coming to Australia in April and she's absolutely gutted. But um, sending you lots of love, lots of love. Thank you for, um, well, I say waking up with us. It's, it's evening in Australia now, isn't it? Depending on where you are. Um, who else has said hello? There's so many people saying good morning. Thank you very much for your company. We've got a jam-packed day. So, brand new in. It's about to sell out, though. Lots of you have got this in your baskets. Do check out on as many units as you want, and it will come all joined up. Okay. Shall we stick with Jersey? In fact... Let's stick with new in as well. These are brand new in today. Uh, we've got the grey and we've also got like a peach colour. This is really nice. This is really grown up actually. You, do you know my favourite thing is wearing like a jersey dress that looks quite smart but you actually feel like you're in your pyjamas. It's so comfortable. This would be a beautiful dress similar to like what I'm wearing actually. And look at how much fabric you get. Extra wide. Jersey, nice and stretchy for just £4.49, exactly what I need. I love this print as well. This is really pretty, isn't it? You've got the spot in the background. And even though it says it's grey, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I think that this is more of a, a mocha latte colour. You, you can see it from here, Kat, mm -hmm. without seeing it on your screen. What colour would you call this? Like it's a nude, isn't it? More of a nude than a grey. Like um, Okay, one of our favourite new words, greige, maybe like a grey beige. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. 
four pounds and 49 pence. Sorry if my microphone's making a funny noise. Um, we've also got, I love this lovely coral tone and the, and the bright raspberry sort of pink and purple. Let me know what you're thinking of making. Those of you that have, have just received maybe your, uh, your overlockers, how quickly you're going to be able to run up or your cover stitch machines. If, you've, uh, if you have received any of those beautiful machines, uh, how quickly you're going to be able to run up amazing garments very quickly and very easily. Now you can get it by the half meter. Have a look on the back of your patterns and see how much or if you just want to get a few meters ready to go. This is going to be brilliant for, as I say, any age, isn't it? Whether it be for little girls' clothing or whether it be for you. Four pounds and 49 pence. Loads of these have flown into baskets. Congratulations, everybody. Sorry, is there a problem with my microphone? Is anybody else hearing it? I think there's a, um, sounds like there's a bee buzzing around me, apparently. Okay, what we'll do in a moment is we'll change my microphone. So once we've got the next fabric out, we will, um, we'll change my microphone. So sorry if it goes quiet for literally 30 seconds. Uh, right, the next new one is on peach. Now they're saying salmon and pink. It's, um, it's a really lovely peachy background with oh, oranges and pinks. Isn't that gorgeous? Four pounds and 49 pence for half a metre of your salmon and pink butterflies jersey fabrics. Morning, Glennis. Four pounds, 49 pence. Oh, really? Oh, lots of people saying they need cheering up this morning. Right, we'll do our best. We've got so many beautiful projects for you. We have got so many beautiful projects. So absolutely, stay tuned, stay tuned. Four pounds and 49 pence. Right, sorry, you'll hear me go quiet just for a second whilst we change my microphone pack. Bear with me. You got me. Is that better? Do I sound like I've got a bee buzzing around me again or not? Think it's clearer? Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, I'm ever so sorry that um, lots of people are feeling a bit low this morning, needing cheering up. We'll, we'll do our best. I know, we all, um, yeah, no, £4.49 for your salmon and pink butterflies. Fantastic news. Jersey fabric for children. My daughter makes tops with the patterns from the Simply Sewing magazine last year. She hasn't sewn before and she's made a dozen. Great as gifts. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, these jersey though are brilliant for children. Yeah, but also for any age, aren't they? That look really, really lovely in a smart dress for, you know, any age. I'm, I'm pleased we've sorted that noise out, Glennis. <laughs> Four pounds, 49 and a half metre. Four pounds, 49. Oh, I hope Syl can hear me. Uh, just so you know, this isn't a whole hour of jersey. Um, we do not have many jersey uh, fabrics in. Look at that. Really lovely stretch to it. And it's super, super soft. Super, super soft. £4.49 a half metre. Now's your chance to purchase by the half metre. We've got some really lovely chunky jersey as well. Oh, in fact, actually, let's do the springtime floral because that's the same sort of weight as these. I think we've used this in projects in the past, actually, and it's always very, very popular. What's this one called? Poppy. Designed for you by Poppy. It's really lovely. Let me spin it round. I think it's got a direction on this one. You've got the ditzy print. You've got the large scale florals as well. 
Oh, see, that's lovely, isn't it? For springtime, this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And jersey, I mean, it's just so in fashion. Dresses like this, even doing cushions in jersey, I'm seeing in, um, in home decor shops as well. Yeah, you can make leggings, you can make jumpers, uh, you can make uh, dresses, you can make children's garments really, really quickly and easily. £7.99. It just means that you can go about your day being comfy in a stretchy fabric. It's just nice, isn't it? If you get yourself some of your jersey needles from on the website and if you have got the cover stitch machine, how amazing will this look to finish it off? I'll show you. On my dress, I've got, this has been finished on a cover stitch machine. So can you see that it's got the two sort of twin needles and then on the back, it's got um, that sort of chain stitch, which means that you can stretch it. Yeah, I am, by the way. Don't cut back to me in vision because this is the front of my dress. Um, but yes, it will still give it that lovely stretch. Yeah, you can absolutely use this for, for T-shirts as well, jersey T-shirts. It would be really nice. Seven pounds and 99 pence for your red flowers on green. And I like that you've got the little daisy, the white, uh, the white flowers as well. Very pretty, very, very pretty indeed. Now my favorite, and talking of big comfy jumpers, these are lovely. Now we've got two different colors, one in a nude and one in like an ochre gold. And can you see that it's got lurex running through? So it gives it that glittery effect. Um, we've got these two colours. Look at this! We'll start with the gold, the nude, the nude. Um, it's like a gold fleck running through. It's so lovely, but it's not scratchy. Do you know sometimes when you can get jumpers that have got lurex running through or socks that have got lurex running through and they can be really itchy, whereas this is super, super soft. You can't actually feel the lurex at all. My favorite thing about this fabric is look at the back. It's literally fleece. Oh, it's gorgeous. Now this, no, I wouldn't make a t-shirt from. I'd make jogger bottoms. Um, I'd make jumpers and hoodies, maybe a jumper dress. This is the ultimate, I feel like I'm still in my jammers. If, you know, we're talking about being um, obviously all at home, um, having comfy loungewear clothes that you, you're working in, um, it's just is, is the, the perks, isn't it, of working from home. You can still be in your comfy bottoms on uh, important Zoom, uh, Zoom meetings and no one would know. It's still got that stretch to it. It's quite a nice chunky, chunky knit, um, but it is going to be lovely to just add a little bit of sparkle. Who was it that I was watching yesterday? I was watching the telly yesterday and they said, um, oh, I was watching our sister channel, Gemporia. And they were saying, just putting a bit of lippy on or just putting a bit of sparkle on, even if we're sitting at home, doesn't often make you feel better. So if this morning you are waking up feeling a bit glum or feeling, I know a lot of people are messaging in saying, right, we need, need some cheering up today. Just what about adding a little bit of sparkle and it's not sequin bling bling bling, it's just a little subtle bit of sparkle. I love that. So lovely, really, really lovely. I think a hoodie would be amazing out of this. Now, one of the, the uh, Pantone color of the, colors of the year, this year, is ochre. Now, this is really gonna brighten you up. We had a pattern, I think it was a so different pattern, where it had like quite a tight-fitting dress underneath and then a big jumper over the top. And we've seen um, this fabric being used in that design before, in that, in that garment, and it was really, really nice. In fact, I think Clive's used this for a jumper, hasn't he, as well? I think he put wings on the back of his jumper, didn't he? How cool is that? Oh, it's going to be brilliant. Patsy um, has said, good morning, Vicky and team. Fab lineup for today. Really looking forward to Yarn Lane 2, um, which is honestly going to be brilliant. It's the Granny Square jumper. Very, very excited. £7.99. I'm excited to, um, as soon as the, the guest uh, arrives with the samples, I'll bring it straight to air. She's not until 12. So, um, yeah, we don't say to her she has to get in at 8 o'clock. So she'll be here later on this morning. 
Um, Pauline, let me have a look for you. Which one are you talking about? Oh no, it's not. It's not a silky fabric. It's um, it's a jersey. It's it's not brushed cotton. It's a jersey. Um, I'm trying to think of how to describe it to you. It's really soft. It's lovely soft cotton. Um, I can give you the composition of it in a moment. Four pounds forty-nine. It's not brushed cotton. It's a stretch jersey. It hasn't got the fleecy back like the other. Can you see? It? I mean, it's um, it's lovely, isn't it? Four pounds and forty-nine. It's brand new in today, though. Um, it is brand new in today, though, Pauline. The pink salmon, brushed cotton or silky smooth? No, it's not. It's not. It's neither. It's not a brushed cotton, and it's not either the silky, silky fabric. Four pounds and forty-nine pence. We were just looking on the supplier websites to see if we can find the, you know, the exact composition. It's a knitted jersey, smooth stretch finish. You don't lose the print when you stretch it. You don't lose the print at all when you stretch it. No, it's lovely. Sorry, Pauline. I wish we had touch of vision that you could reach in and just feel it. Hope I've um, described that all right. Let me know if you want any, any more help or any more guidance. Okay. So, <laughs> we've also got two other oh these are nice that pink is really lovely it's so soft now this feels fluffy it's also got the fleecy back and this is brand new in today you know i think this is brand new so once again it's got great stretch to it four pounds 49 and on the reverse come on in elliot because this is so soft it's literally fluffy so the back of it isn't white, it's pink as well. And it's really, really soft. Well, you haven't got the fray, have you? It's not going to fray. Um, you can finish this off, obviously, with an overlocker. You can do it with a simple zigzag. You can do it with your pinking shears. You don't need to have. I think a lot of people think, oh, to work with a jersey, I'm going to have to have an overlocker. It helps and it will give you a real professional finish, but there are other alternatives. You could also do like a um, like a lightning bolt stitch, you know, the one that's like that. I don't know what the technical term for it is, but like the lightning bolt stitch, you could do that. And it's so, so soft. I can't explain to you just how, how beautifully fleecy this is. And uh, it's only on the one side is it fleecy, but that would be really, really nice to even have showing part of the, the reverse of it as well, actually. Two different contrasting textures. New in today, it's brand new in today. Oh, I'm excited to see this in projects. I think this is gonna look great in lots of projects. If you want to do some color blocking, get even, even you know, a meter of this, a meter of the cream as well, and putting them both together in a project to do a hoodie or jumper color blocking, that'd be look lovely. We have got the ivory. What are you whispering for, Elliot? Oh, he's, he's, he's judging his DIY skills. We told you from the start that they were on a bit wonky. He's saying, I don't think I've put that bar up very straight. Oh, it's the paper that's wonky on that one, okay. So what is it that you're saying that you, you didn't do very well? He wants to do some more DIY and put some more things on the set, I see. Um, this one, again, has got that fleecy back, which is going to be so beautiful against your skin. This would be really, really lovely for baby makes, especially because the reverse of it is so soft. So, so soft. Half a metre, even with half a metre. You're going to be able to make loads, especially if you're doing just little diddy diddy clothes. Oh, this would be lovely. Oh, 
This is so much, isn't it? So much, £4.49 and a half metre. We don't normally sell jersey for £4.49 and a half metre, do we? Um, half a metre looks like this. That is a lot for your money, isn't it? And remember, it's going to be cut off the bolt, especially for you. It's nice and wide, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that is so lovely. Four pounds and 49 pence a half metre. <laughs> Thank you. Kat has got the biggest water bottle. Can I show it on air, please? Yes, Rachel, beautiful for baby grows. Absolutely. Oh, because they're only Diddy. I started washing some of my little baby grows ready the other day, um, yesterday, and they dry just and I was folding them up and they are tiny. So with half a metre of this, yeah, you'd be able to make loads. I need to show you Kat's water bottle because this is actually hilarious. Um, <laughs> one, it's a workout to lift it. Look at that. She says, I've got to try and drink more water. So she's coming with this today. And it's, a phone stand. and it's a phone stand as well. She wants me to tell everybody it's a phone stand. That must be really heavy. Oh, that is a good old weight. 3.8 litres, which we think we've decided is too much. You shouldn't be drinking that today. Well, they say that men should drink 3.7 recommended. 2.7 for women. I thought it was two litres of water that we were supposed to drink. Minimum. Okay. Yeah, I know that we are up early in the day and Kat says that sometimes she gets some headaches so she wants to make sure that she's drinking plenty of water. But um, that's a lot, isn't it? I've never seen a bottle like that before. Uh, absolutely. Good morning, good morning. Um, Patsy said, good morning, Vicky and team. Fab lineup today. Oh, I've read your message already, haven't I? Uh, feeding the nation, Kat, Rachel's just says. <laughs> Watering the nation, yes. Um, right, the dinosaur jerseys completely sold out. The butterflies are really, really limited as well. And that's all of the jersey that we've got for you today. Shall we do some faux suede? Because this is lovely as well. This is really different. I think this is 100% polyester. So nice to be able to chuck into the wash. Because I had, I had like a gilet. Um, a gilet made out of very, very similar, well, I had it, it was out of suede and you just couldn't, you really, really struggled to, well, I was too scared to wash it. Uh, whereas this would be really, really lovely for um, a, like a waterfall style jacket, going over a pair of jeans with a white shirt, it would look really, really smart indeed. And you can wash this no problem. Um, it does have a slight stretch to it. It has got stretch to it as well, seven pounds and 99 pence. Um, one, four, five wide, and it's 100% polyester. It's so, so soft. Okay, Elliot wants some hot pants out of this one now, Alison Marion, if you're watching. Oh no, Samantha needs cheering up as well. Oh my word. What day is it today? Wednesday, isn't it? It's just Wednesday. I don't know. We're not normally here on Wednesday. We're always feeling good by Thursday, Friday, aren't we? I feel all right today, actually. I think. Maybe it's middle of the week, hump day, isn't it? Just remember, it's going to be light. It's just getting lighter, isn't it? This time next week, uh, this time next week, we'll be saying that we'll have an extra hour of daylight. Um, and I think by the end of this month, it won't be getting dark until like near six o'clock, which is just amazing, isn't it? April, I heard that the sun doesn't get till half eight at night. Oh, it'd be so nice. Right, can we just very quickly go back to the salmon pink butterflies again? And a message from Susan. Hi, Susan. Morning. Can you tell me how wide the butterfly jersey is uh, and the pink jersey? This is the butterfly. How wide is it? So look, I think it's 150. Oh, do you know what? On Rebecca's bags that are coming up later on, the actual handle is a tape measure, like to scale. How cool is that? 
How cool, it's a tape measure. And honestly, all of the quotations that are on the lining of these bags are brilliant. They will be going on pre-order very soon. I will tell you straight away as soon as they are. Um, the pre-order section is going it's going very, very crazy uh, this morning, especially for those Helen Newton. Right, that's quite, it says between 130 and 160 wide. So let me see. Right, you're gonna have to bear with me because I'm so bad at doing things like this. Um, and remember, you can have as much or as little as you want. Does it have the pink jersey? Do you have that one for Susie? It's very wide. Right, in inches, you are looking more than 60. I'm, I'm doing this a, a little roughly. Um, right, it's about 64 inches wide, Susie. About 64 inches wide. And I'm guessing the pink might be the same. The pink, Right, now I'm jumping to centimetres, 150 wide. 150 wide for the pink. Does that help? Hopefully that helps. So this one, 150. Okay, the butterflies is about 160 wide in centimetres. This one is about 150 wide in centimetres. Um, Four pounds and 49 pence a half metre. It's after I did my show with Native Lighting, Claire, the other day that I've been put off trying to measure anything on air ever again. <laughs> I know, but I'm scared now that I'll say, I, I get everything. I'm just not very good at uh, measuring things. Um, yeah, this is 150 wide and it's the one with the fleecy back. It's so lovely. Very, very popular, brand new in today. Good luck, Susie. Thank you for your questions. Get them in, get them in. Right, now we've done this suede. Can we do these ones? Because I think for summer, these are beautiful. We've got the scuba, which again, got a slight stretch to it. Oh, I say scuba, it feels like a scuba. Look at that print. I am thinking for anybody who maybe was supposed to be a guest at a wedding and weddings have been postponed, we have time to make our outfit. I think this will take us right through summer and autumn. And I know there's still a bit of uncertainty. There's some weddings that I've got planned in for the summer, which are there umming and ahhing whether to postpone to the autumn. So if you do want to think, right, actually, do you know what? I want to get my dress and, and sort out the way. This is going to be brilliant for autumn or summer. 96% uh, polyester and then 4% spandex. So it only has a very small stretch to it. It's a scuba style. It's a spandex stretch scuba style. It's a soft, gorgeous, medium weight fabric. And I love the digital print. It's an absolutely beautiful print, isn't it? 140 wide on this one. Or 145 wide. It's lovely. It's a digital print, isn't it? So cool. Especially if you're doing, you know, a dress, quite a fitted dress. I'm thinking like maybe this style. Mm, no, I don't know whether I've got one on here that I think would be suitable. Um, I, I've, got a, I've got a pattern in mind. It's, do you know the one that Clive did the other day that was slightly off the shoulder? It was a pattern preacher one. I think this would look really nice in that. Look really, really nice. They did it in William Morris, quilting cotton, but it would, it would look so different in this. Okay, we've got palm leaves. Now this is different, this is completely different. This is a lightweight. Oh, I'm thinking men's shirts. 98% viscose, but it's still got a little bit of stretch to it. It's 2% spandex. So if you are thinking of a holiday shirt, it has got that stretch. For, yeah, absolutely. When we're able to go back on holiday, pair of uh, jeans or linen sh trousers or shorts, it's going to look great, isn't it? Maxi dress. I like to still have a little bit of stretch to it, though. Do, do you know what I mean? It's nice, especially um, as it's war when it's warm. I always think, oh, I don't want to wear anything tight, especially on holiday when you're um, you probably are indulging. 
You want something that's light, that's going to dry quickly as well. It's lovely. It's going to wash really well. Um, this is 140 wide. 140 wide. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Do you know everyone feeling glum today? Should we just talk about holidays? Oh. I don't know if that makes it worse or better. I don't know. I don't know. But it's just, this would be lovely for your holly bobs. There will be a day that we can go on holiday again. Seven pounds and 99 pence. Okay. Elliot's going to make a shirt now to go with his hot pants. We give such a great impression of our very professional director, don't we? Uh, right. Is there any others that have got stretched then? I think that's it. Now we've got a linen one, talking of like summer and holidays and springtime. This one is called a Darling Stripe. 55% linen uh, and 45% viscose. It's 145 wide. This would be a really lovely dress like this. That'd be really nice in this dress actually. Or you could even just use it as the contrast. I, I, I think it's because I'm looking at stripes here, but you could do something similar to this. One that you just throw on over a pair of chinos. What about for men's wear? What about as a shirt like this? I think we might have seen this one previously as a shirt actually. I think we've done this previously as a shirt. You could do the so different everyday chic dress with it. Seven pounds and 99 pence. Let us know what you're thinking of making. Maybe it's a New Year's resolution to, to make more garments for yourself. I know lots of people who are brilliant dressmakers and every time I speak to them I say, oh, have you made anything for yourself lately? And they're like, oh no, I've been too busy, I've been too busy. Um, but we're coming up to that time on Instagram. I'm not sure what month it is. But I know that Catherine Wright takes part in it. There's quite a few of our guest designers that do it. Um, but it's Me Makes, and they do it for a whole month wearing Me Makes. So if you do want to, um, to take part in it, you have to have a look on Instagram. £7.99, but this would make a really lovely just everyday dress, wouldn't it? Home decors as well. What do you think about using it for, um, for bags? or home decor. That'd be lovely, it's like a linen style cushion actually. Beer garden is what Elliot's thinking about. Men's shorts in this. Um, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be scared if you were in the beer garden wearing these shorts. He's got a bit of a thing about these hot pants, hasn't he? Oh, longer shorts, you're thinking. Right. <laughs> Deary me, everything involving hot pants, Elliot. It's normally either shirt lining, suit linings, or hot pants. Um, seven pounds and 99 pence for your orange. <gasps> oh dear, our fashionista in the gallery. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is so delicate. This drapes beautifully. Do you know what I'd do with this one, this dress, the so different flounce dress? Because you could even just have the flounce as this and then have one of the solid colours and there's loads to pick out as your top. Oh, that would look sensational. It would look really expensive, wouldn't it? It's just 7 99 and a half metre, but because this drapes so beautifully, it is lightweight, so be aware when you're cutting it out to make sure that it's lying nice and flat. Maybe use pattern weights and a good pair of scissors because it, it might move about slightly, but it is nothing to be afraid of. It's so gorgeous as a blouse. Oh, I love it. 100% viscose, it's so soft, so, so soft. What um, width is this, do you know? 140 wide, 141. And look at the colours, you've got the ochres, you've got the corals and the pinks, the turquoise, and even like some burgundy in here. That would be really nice to mix with um, burgundy, actually. You've got like your terracottas, this deep, 
beautiful blue. 7 and a half metre. It's been ages since I've seen a dressmaking show. I've not done any uh, dressmaking fabric shows like this for ages. £7.99. pence. Um, rarely, rarely get the chance to show you our dressmaking fabrics and that is so pretty. So pretty. I'm even thinking if you've got the cover stitch machine, if you're just getting the hand, uh, hang of the uh, accessory set, or if you've got an overlock and you just want to do a rolled hem, just a really fine rolled hem on this as scarves, that would be beautiful. If you're buying just half a metre, um, you could make such beautiful scarves with this. So pretty. Yeah, I love that. For spring, it's beautiful. Add with any outfit then, if it's a, a lovely scarf that you put with any of those colours or even just white, look lovely. Um, oh, go on then, let's do this. Now, this I think it might be new. Well, it's new to me. This is really fun. And I, I just think it looks very, very designer indeed. I'm thinking like some, um, you know, the harem style trousers, cat. I think this is really, really nice in a pair of trousers or a, a shirt, ladies' shirt. It reminds me of a, a designer. It reminds me of a designer as well. It's these colours. This is really nice. It's 100% cotton. Um, it's a lawn weight cotton and it would be absolutely beautiful for dressmaking. It drapes really nicely, but it gives you a bit more of a structured dress compared to the last one. Um, but really smart and it will wash beautifully. It will sew beautifully. Um, it's one, four, five wide. One, four, five wide. If you do love these colours, it's like bubbles, isn't it? Like bubbles in your Prosecco glass. It's called Prosecco Fizz. I do love all those colours. Especially against the, the deep navy background. You've got almost like the sherbet tones, the, uh, the beautiful lemons and the spearmint greens, the blues, the pinks. Seven pounds and 99 pence. Brand new, yes it is. It's another one that's brand new in today. We're absolutely spoiling rotten with all these new fabrics. And it's beautifully soft. This um, won't be as difficult to work with. You know, we were saying about the viscose can be quite slippy and slidey, especially when you're cutting out your pattern pieces. This one um, is going to be a really nice dress. Um, I've just noticed the time. <laughs> I've just noticed the time. We've got so much to do before Cara joins me. In 10 minutes, right, my peacock fabric I adore. This is absolutely, I told you, peacock's following me again. So, this has got a stretch to it. This is very Ted Baker-esque. This would be a brilliant brilliant designer dress. I mean, that is stunning. I love it. Absolutely love how dramatic it is. Look at all of these beautiful uh, peacock feathers. You could do your flounce dress. I would use one of the, even a lighter color as your main dress. And this is the flounce with the peacock feathers. Oh, it would just look beautiful. One of my favorite fabrics that we've got. And it does. It has a bit of a stretch though, Elliot. It's a slight stretch to it. <laughs> and it says I need a stretchy suit. He's thinking of a suit. 97% viscose and then 3% span, uh, sorry, spandex, yeah. 130 wide. Is somebody asking you about how to combine your orders? Because I think um, Angela's just Angela's just said, no, at the end of the second purchases, it offers to combine your orders. Has somebody asked about it? But yeah, you're absolutely right, Angela. So you can combine your orders so you only pay one P and P. You only pay one P and P. I didn't see another message. Haven't seen the question you're answering. Um, right, so next one. I'm not doing very well with my folding today, I must say. Uh, I know, I'm sorting it all out later. Uh, these have always been very, very popular in our projects. This is more, oh, it's that one. More side array chalk viscose fabric. 100% viscose, super, super soft. It's 135 wide. 
This would be lovely for spring, for summer. In fact, it would be nice in autumn as well. One that you could make into a scarf, isn't it? If you want to just make some nice gifts for people. Super, super soft. And it's just £7.99 a half metre. You will love it. You will absolutely love it. It is a beautiful, beautiful design, isn't it? And lovely colours coming through. I like that you've got the ochre. Very on trend. Very, very on trend. Um, I'm fl flying through these now because we've literally got no time. No time. If I don't get a chance to do all of the patterns, they are available on the website. They are available on the website. This would make a lovely beach bag. Dress. Shirt. Dungarees. Kids dungarees. Um, now it's a viscose and linen mix. Which direction? That way. One four five wide. And I do love that stripe. That is so nautical, isn't it? So nautical, really cool design. Eight pounds and 49 pence a half metre. Oh, does it? It reminds Elliot of when he went to the Caribbean. It is lovely, isn't it? I do love. I think that would be really, really nice as a summer dress, actually. You went on a jet ski? Oh, gosh. I do, um, I do like jet skis, but I think they're a bit scary as well. Eight pounds and 49 pence a half metre. I think we're more or less through all the fabrics. I've got one other, oh, in fact, actually, no, I've got, yeah, one other. One more, one more to show you, I think. Which is this one, and this is really, really cool as well. This almost feels like a, um, I'd, do you know what? I think that this would be a nice fabric to use in home furnishings as blinds. doesn't have a stretch to it. It's got great structure. It's 55% linen and 45% viscose. Um, I think this would be really nice for cushions with a piped edge, big cushion, piped edge. Um, or I think that this would be really, really nice for, for um, bag making as well. I love this sort of watercolours. Just £8.49 looks very designer again, doesn't it? Very, very designer. It'd be lovely for any of the, uh, the so different dresses, whether it be the Eclipse dress, just your quite relaxed style dress, or you could do the everyday chic dress with this. That'd look really nice as well. £8.49, a half metre. It is lovely and wide, and it's that gorgeous mist sort of effect. It's really cool. Do have a look back on the website and see what we've still got available. All of our jerseys have been super, super popular today. I'm not surprised we're all needing a bit of extra stretch fabric, aren't we? Um, now, a couple of patterns just to show you. We did talk about this pattern earlier on. I think this was one that was demonstrated by Mark. No, Clive. I think it was Clive because he was wearing the um, green gingham one. Do you remember? Was it with us? No. It wasn't with us, was it? Was it with us? We've seen this one before. I, I have no idea. Yesterday I was adamant that I was not here on the 15th of January, and I was. <laughs> Nine pounds and 99 pence. If you are thinking of a nice casual summer, springtime shirt, or... This is nice for workwear as well, isn't it? Really nice. All of the, uh, the, the, the fabric requirements and your sizes are on the back of the packet, which is the second image on the website. But fabrics you can use, poplin, chambray, batiks, linen, chalice, rayons. Yeah, absolutely. Look amazing in a batik. Cool. Just £9.99. I don't know why I said cool. Yay, fabrics! <laughs> Rebecca Reed said, I, do, you know, do you ever say things on air and you think, I don't know why I've just said that. Yep, cool, move on, move on. I didn't mean it like that, I promise. Um, I'm just very aware of the time, the flounce dress. 
All of the others will be available on the website. This is one that we've mentioned quite a bit though, so I do want to just quickly remind you, 14 pounds and 99 pence. Oh, it's such a beautiful dress. We've done it with Rachel Illsley before. Um, I can't remember who else has demonstrated this. I think we've seen it a couple of times. We might have even done it with Mark, with Mark Francis or maybe Adele. Faye. Oh, honestly, yeah, we've seen this quite a few times actually. It's lovely. $14.99 for your sizes 8 to 26. So different patterns are always very, very popular. As you can see, they're nice and chunky. You've got loads of instructions as well as great support online. They do a brilliant blog post. Uh, they do video tutorials. They also have really, really lovely pattern pieces as well. Nice quality pattern pieces. Everybody who works with so different patterns, they always love them. Um, then, very, very quickly, just to remind you, today's early bird special, those of you that are just waking up with us, don't worry. I think everybody's feeling a little, um, I don't know, a bit of a feeling of glum today. Don't worry, here, we're going to um, cheer you up. We've got a brilliant day for you today. Um, early bird special was one that I know lots of us use and lots of us love. It is the Visaline Face Max interlining fabric. You get a whole metre for £4.98. So if you're making any of our face coverings or any of the face coverings at home, um, this is designed to be in the middle of your two layers of cotton. Uh, so just to give you extra protection, although it is really lovely and breathable, it's machine washable up to 60 degrees. So you can of course just chuck it in the wash and with the meter piece that we're offering today, with the panels that we've designed, the Rebecca Reed uh, Sewing Street panels, which you can find on our website, you'll be able to make uh, 14, 14 face coverings with one meter. How good is that? Every single time that we, uh, that we bring it on air, it always sells out. Just be aware. So we're very excited that we've got it as an early bed today. Just £4.98. Right, we're going to go and get Cara. Do not go anywhere though because it is time. The most amazing Helen Newton free motion cushion design. Don't worry, you don't have to do it as free motion. We're going to give you lots of different options. It's the sewing machine and the sewing room up first. We've got the potting shed coming up later on. So get ready on pre-order. Check out as soon as you can. We've got 200 of each, but they're already selling very quickly. We'll see you with Cara right after this. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Hello everyone, my name's Cara Ackerman and I'm absolutely delighted to be here at Sewing Street. Um, I actually originated from Hertfordshire, 
then went down to Hampshire, and then it ended up in the East Midlands. I've been in the East Midlands for about 40 years now, which seems crazy. Um, but 36 of those, I actually worked with DMC Creative World, um, which was wonderful. I really, really enjoyed that. And then um, I decided to go freelance, and that's how I got introduced to Sewing Street. I love doing anything to do with um, textiles, so embroidery, cross stitch, patchwork, done a bit of quilting, bag making, toy making, oh goodness, there's loads and loads of things. Um, what I love doing is just trying something new, and I think one of the tips is don't be frightened of trying something new. Um, you always learn from it, and you know, don't be scared of making mistakes either. We all learn from the mistakes that we make. Um, little bit about me that you might not know and that's a bit of a surprise. Um, I once went to the garden party down at Buckingham Palace, the Queen's Garden Party, for some work that I did with Marie Curie. I was so, so lucky to go there and just a wonderful time. Um, so I hope to see more of you on Sewing Street and I hope to try lots of new crafts with you. So see you again soon. Bye bye. While we're having to spend more time at home again, we're here to keep you busy and entertained. Sewing Street will be live every day from 8am, bringing you plenty of demonstrations with our experts in dressmaking, quilting, bag making, toy making, needle felting, embroidery and so much more. Our community of fellow sewists on the Sewing Street Fans Facebook group are there to chat to you about whatever you're making sharing photos and advice. Check out the Sewing Street Facebook and Instagram pages for fun competitions and offers. Hello, welcome back. Well done everybody who's already got these on pre-order. Are you ready? Kat is saying in my ear. She is ready and ready to go. Um, just a quick heads up. Amber Makes projects, the bags are now finally on pre-order. So have a look on the website. Grab these and also get ready for these amazing Amber Makes bags. We are so excited about these frame tote bags. The quotes on them are brilliant. We were having a right giggle this morning. Uh, the lining ones especially are really, really funny. I love them. Absolutely love them. You're going to love them too. Stay tuned. They're exclusive to us here at Sewing Street. And we, every single one of us, need to get one of those. Now, Helen Newton, oh my word, she's Number one, one of the loveliest ladies you could ever meet. She's incredibly talented and she is brilliant at designing projects. Last time um, we had Cara demonstrating uh, the, the, the the bears. Oh, I had it yesterday with me, behind me. Um, there was the bears and there was also the dog. Uh, they completely sold out. It's the first time that I'm seeing the Helen Newton patterns in action. And I am absolutely thrilled that, it, that I'm on air today because these are going to be very popular. It's the sewing room, of course it's going to be popular. Now, we'll start with this kit. Um, we've also got the instructions available on their own, which lots of people have spotted. I don't think they're gonna be available on their own for long. Uh, now, in the kit, it's brilliant because you get not only the fantastic instructions, which will go through exactly what you do as soon as you get your kit home, we're gonna take it step by step with Cara. So in the kit, you have your, your instructions you have your sewing pattern uh, and you can see there you've also got some templates uh, you also get a fat quarter of ivory you get half a meter of this beautiful beautiful rose that is such a gorgeous color and then this is what's really cool because when you're doing designs like this obviously you can see it's using lots of different prints which if you are you know not wanting to go into fat quarters or or dive into too many of your half meter fabrics this is amazing because look you are getting everything that you need on this panel and they're all labeled as well Bobbin number three, 
pincushion top, bobbin ends, yarn number four, yarn three, yarn two, yarn one, needles, shelves, scissors, sewing machine, garments, sewing machine. It's amazing. So you can create this incredible cushion, have a look at it here, just exactly like this from home. I mean, it's brilliant, isn't it? And you've got all the fabric that you need to, to get this variety. Um, it's 19 99 which I think is brilliant. Such a good prize, uh, especially as you're getting the instructions in there as well. Jackie said, I love Helen Newton patterns. Uh, I, I, I was so lucky to watch her demos at our local fabric shop. I've made some of her patterns. Jackie, she's amazing, and isn't she just so lovely? She's such a lovely woman as well. So we're very, very lucky to be, uh, to be working alongside Helen. Um, now, this has been extremely popular. In fact, Rebecca Reed was saying this morning that she has lots of chats with Helen Newton about crocheting. She says, yeah, and I said, we need to get her on Yarn Lane then. And she said, oh, she said, um, she, she doesn't, she says, I've got no one else to talk to about crochet. So she'll send Rebecca lots of pictures and they said they sit for hours talking about crochet. Um, but this sewing room design is gorgeous. Now it has also got um, free mo it has also got free motion quilting involved, but don't worry, if you don't want to do free motion, Cara is going to give us some different ways of being able to applique uh, the different elements on, so stay tuned for that. Just so you know, please, please do check out as soon as you can. What's Paula said, sorry? Try to check out. Ah, okay. If you're struggling checking out the website, um, please speak to the customer service team and they'll be able to help you. They will be able to help you. If it's free to call from landline or mobile and they'll be able to help. Um, what was that, Elliot? Oh, he was reading the number for you. 0800 001 4433. If you want to speak to the customer service team. Uh, okay, do check out as soon as you can because... We have very limited availability of the pattern on its own. Now, if you do have plenty of fabric in your stash and you're thinking, do you know what? I've got lots of little offcuts which I can use. Um, then absolutely, of course, if you want to use different colors, if you want to do it in brights, if you want to do it in kaif, if you want to make it look like your sewing room, maybe you've, you've started making lots of storage boxes out of Liberty or things and you want to add it in a bit of Liberty, then you get your instructions from Helen Newton for £9.99 and they're really lovely quality instructions as well. Um, plus, remember, jot down today's date because we will be going through it step by step with Cara. All of your templates that you need are there as well. £9.99 for your instructions, but they won't last by the way. We had I think 100 of these patterns and they will sell out very, very quickly indeed. We've got 200 kits. Oh no, oh my word, they will sell out very quickly. Um, half the stock's already gone. If you have got it in your basket, please do be very, very careful. Nine pounds and 99 pence. So, the kit is gonna be your main graphics. Cara, it's lovely to have you oh, back. How are really you? Good. It's really good to be here. Thank you very much indeed. How are you? I'm all good, thank you. You're blooming. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, so, You've done some of the Helen Newton projects before, haven't I you? I have, I have, and um, I absolutely love them, and I feel so privileged. I'm hoping she's watching, so I'll say hello, Helen. Oh, Helen's so lovely. Wonderful. Um, I feel very, very privileged to be able to bring um, some of Helen's designs, and I'm not a massively experienced um, free motion quilter. Um, so, you know, it's new to me, um, but I absolutely love them. So that absolutely just shows you, you don't need to be a massively experienced free no, motion quilter, do all, you? No, not at all. And I will show, um, I thought for the first hour, if it's okay, I'll show you about transferring the templates and cutting those out and the fabric and placing them on the design. Then if there's time, I'll do a bit of free motion. But the second hour, I'll actually go through a little bit more about the alternatives. Oh, brilliant. So for the potting shed one, I'll go through, you know, a bit more there. Really, from my point of view of what I've learned and, you know, Helen's just so experienced and is, you know, wonderful at doing the designs and the um, instructions and everything. So she's holding your hand as you do yeah, it, which yes. is lovely. So what do you do when you get the kit home? What's the first thing you do? Let's pretend we've just received this. Drawl. <laughs> yes, 
just indulge. <laughs> just enjoy. Um, I think, you know, obviously um, take the panel and press that, get that all sorted. Um, I actually cut each of the individual pieces of um, the, pa oh, did you? the panel out. And did you keep the little labels yes, attached to them? Yes, so I actually cut them. I haven't got a panel here, but yep. I cut them and included the labels so oh, that I wouldn't idea. forget what they were for. Which and um, which? Yeah, so I sort of cut all of those out, which is lovely, and you know, kept the labels, and then um, transfer, read the instructions, so spend time, read the instructions, and then um, the next one is transferring your templates onto Bondaweb. Okay. So I think we've got Bondaweb, haven't we? Now, is one packet going to be? Yes, it's plenty, enough. absolutely plenty. If you've got the Bundle Web on a roll, brilliant. If you need to get a packet, it's just two ninety nine, and that's going to be plenty to do the cushion. Just two pounds and ninety nine pence, and we'll show you how you use that as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's got like a, a rough side, hasn't yes, it? Yes, there's side. a paper, like a greaseproof paper, okay. and then the other side is sort of um, you can. It, there's a texture to it, mm -hmm. so that's the glue side. Um, so when you're transferring. All the um, actual motifs are in reverse, so you will actually just trace over the top and you can see quite clearly that they are very clear, um, you know, to see through the bond web. The only thing that one of the lovely ladies, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she did um, point out that actually the sewing machine mm -hmm. on the cushion um, is looks like a left-handed one. Yeah, we said this earlier, didn't we? Yeah. Which, you know, okay, if it is, then all you'll do is just turn the paper over oh. and if you want a right-handed sewing machine, you'll just trace around um, the thing um, on the glue side rather than the paper side. Right. So that's the only thing that you need to do. Or you do it that way round, but don't include the wheel. Yeah. So it is like the back of the sewing machine. So um, I'm just going to show you how this looks. Um, could you pass me over that one? Um, Thank you. We had hundreds of these kits, just so you know, and over a quarter of the stock is now completely gone. So do be aware, if you've got it in your basket, don't wait until the end of the demo. We're only 11 minutes into the show. So just be aware that they are selling very quickly. So the light box is, is lovely. So if you're um, transferring the designs and the templates, onto your bonder web and it's dark and yeah. you can't see so clearly then a light box is wonderful although at the moment you can see the back of the pattern as well but you can see the front um, mm -hmm. very very clearly um, so I'm going to just trace around the other thing that I found as well when I was doing this was um, actually a pencil I got uh, the lead of the pencil on my hands or if I used a, a biro I got the biro on my hands right. so I found the best thing was an actual child's crayon oh really and it was really good because it gives a nice thick edge and I think that's the um, other thing is that don't worry about having a thick edge around your shape and there are extra lines on the shapes as well that I'll show you how we can transfer those I always over. think when you see these cushions, they look really arty and you have to be really good at drawing, but the great thing is, is Helen's done all the hard work for she us. She definitely has, definitely has. So I'm just going around this bow because I thought it was quite a nice shape to show you. So that's with the light box. And as I say, if you don't have a light box, it is possible to do it without one. Um, I think I'll do... I've been and trying to put mine up against the window. It's a bit of dull days at the moment, <laughs> but if you just try and put it up against the window... You, you can, can, but you can see off. actually, you know, really quite yeah. clearly that you can actually see through. Um, this is the fabric that's actually on the sewing machine. The other thing about the bond web is don't, um, you know, think you've got to put your bond web on there and draw around it. You can actually be very, very economical mm. and move the bond web so you're not wasting anything. Oh yeah, good point. You want to have a little bit of fabric, um, fabric bond web around the edge and um, because what we're going to do is just roughly cut that out. Okay. So, um, so with paper scissors you're going to roughly cut round 
and I'm actually going to put the iron on. But we roughly cut round the edge. Um, you, it doesn't have to be precise at this stage. And you this is what you're going to do with your paper scissors, Cara. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's up to you if you've got when you come to actually putting this onto the fabric and then cutting it out around the edge of the bond web it really is up to you whether you use your fabric scissors or you actually use some paper scissors if you've right. got sharp paper scissors then you can use those so yeah. I love this little lion sorry I should have put it on earlier but uh, we are now in single figures, by the way, for the instructions on their own. So if you do want those on their own, um, they are just 9 99 And you do get all of your templates, uh, you get all of your instructions, and that's to make this. Remember, you can supply your own fabric. You'll need, uh, it's, we use a fat quarter for the front of um, the, the scene, half a metre for the, the border and the reverse of your cushion. And then just any little bits that you want to... Uh, what I like about the panel is that they all tie together really nicely, but by all means, if you've got a collection of Liberty, for example, or one of your favourite Tula or Moda or something, would be beautiful. Or Tilda, yes. Tilda would be really nice. Have a look on the website and get yourself some fat quarters or something if you want. Um, we've had a picture come through, did you say? Ah, we'll make it into a slide and we'll show it on air. Thank you. Okay. Um, when you actually cut out, these are the pieces that I've got left over. I had two panels, so these are the pieces I've got left over. So you've got quite a lot of fabric left over as well oh, really? if you buy the panel, which is really good. Um, so, and there's extra fabric. Oh, so if you think, oh, I've done this wrong, I'm not happy with that, then yeah. you don't need to worry too much. No, no, not at all. So all I would do, I've just ironed my fabric and you want to put the bond web so the, the rough side of the bond web needs to go onto the fabric. Mm -hmm. And again, you want to be quite economical about where you put all your pieces. So you've got extra pieces left over afterwards. And then what you'll do is once you're happy with um, the positioning of that, you'll just put the iron over the top, a dry iron. And that heat releases the glue on the bond web. Ah, uh, do you know what? I just thought, because I've got a friction pen here, but you don't want to transfer no. your designs with a friction pen because you will lose your markings here. And, yep. and, and like you said, you don't need to cut right to the line on this point because you want the glue to go right to the edge. So yes. best to probably not cut so accurately at the start. No, definitely not. And it's much, much easier. And this is sort of all part of your preparation. Okay. Um, so then you roughly, I'm using these little scissors because they're pretty sharp. If they're paper scissors, they're pretty sharp. And then this is when, once that's all adhered, you'll actually just cut round. And don't worry how accurate you are um, because when you come to do your free motion or your applique stitches, um, you will have a little bit of fabric around the edge so we're just going round the bow there so this is what you'll do with all so this is all part of your preparation with all the pieces like that and you see I'm just going roughly round the edge you'll take a little bit more time than I'm taking at the moment oh, that looks okay nice and neat, Cara. <laughs> And then the other thing that I will um, say to you before you get to this stage, I'll leave the iron there. This is oh, such a gorgeous, That's like a, a raspberry, colour, isn't raspberry, it? raspberry colour. It's really, really nice. And it goes nice. really well with the panel colours yes. as well. It all ties in together nicely, doesn't it? Yes. So you, you will follow the instructions and Helen very... Um, is very thorough with all the information about what you're cutting out. So the square out of the cream fabric, you want a 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch square, 32 by 32. And then you'll want four panels for the borders. One is a short panel and the other one is a long panel and all the measurements are there. You'll cut those out and then you'll actually machine those together. So it's like a frame around the actual cushion. Mm -hmm. Um, 
you'll also have a couple of pieces and this is an envelope back. Oh, nice and easy then. Yeah, so it just, you've got a lovely overlap there, which is nice. So you'll cut those out and get those, pop those to one side, you'll need those later. Um, so you've machined everything on and then your alternative is, what I've done is I didn't have any stitch and tear, but if you have stitch and tear, then you can have stitch and tear on the back. Right, okay, so what's stitch and tear going to, to So do? stitch and tear is like a stabiliser. Right. So it actually supports your stitches when you're, you're working. And um, what you'll do is you can do your free motion um, embroidery through the fabric and the stitch and tear. Mm -hmm. And then when you've finished, as it says on the packet, you tear away the actual paper. Right, okay. And you're left with your um, design on there. As I say, I didn't have that um, at home, so I just used some medium interfacing. Right, okay. Okay, yeah. and the medium interfacing stays there, it mm -hmm. doesn't move. Uh, there's a lady asked, and do you know what? There's no such thing as a daft question. It's really <laughs> good to ask questions. Please get them in. Good morning, love the pattern. Can you use freezer paper instead of the bonder web? Sorry if it's a daft question. Angela, there's no such thing as a daft question. <laughs> um, I wouldn't. Um, I've never used freezer paper, so I'm not exactly sure how freezer paper works. Yeah. Can you? Um, um, I think because it's not going, it hasn't got the glue adhesive. It, yes. It's good as a template to hold, because it's not going to hold your fabric down. Yes. It's not got the adhesive to stick to your yes. fabric. Okay. Fabric. Yeah. It can stick to your background if you're using it as a template, but... No, I think you need bonder web. Yeah. It looks very similar, so quite often you think, oh, can I get away with using that? But it's a different thing. You need to be able to peel it off and leave the sticky on your fabric to then stick down, which you can't do with freezer paper. Yeah, yeah, thank you. No. <laughs> I, um, I, only, I only know about uh, bond web. So that's my panel, that's my back panel, and that's ready to start doing the um, putting the pieces on. But before then, if you've never done um, free motion embroidery before, if you've never done applique before, I always suggest have a go on a scrap of fabric. And oh, um, nice. look at this. So with your spare fabric, what you can do is cut out some extra pieces and adhere them to, I've again used the um, medium interfacing, adhere them to the back of the fabric and then you can do your free motion. And this is where you get to know how your machine works. Right. You get comfortable with what you're doing. Um, I've actually, I didn't have any black thread at home, so I've used a dark red one because I thought that was quite nice. But it is better if it's a darker thread. You know, don't think, oh, I'll get a cream and I'll go around there because it, it's like a sketch. That's the whole thing yeah. is that it doesn't need to be super, super neat. In fact, it's quite nice to be doodled, hence why yes. you go over the lines a few times, don't you? Yes, yes. Which is, um, you know, one of the beauties of this um, particular design. Yeah. And when you're doing it, you look at it and you think, oh, gosh, you know, I've made a mistake or anything like that. And again, mm -hmm. it's not a mistake. It's just your way of doing it. And it's unique. So your interpretation of the design will be different from somebody mm -hmm. else's. So that's what I would suggest is actually have a go. If you've never done it before, have a go. So I've got, um, I haven't used the 680 for free motion, um, apart from I think the last time I was on doing right. the um, teddies and everything. So again, you're getting used to a different machine, um, the different speed, the different way it works. And I'm going to, in the second hour, go through some of the feet that are included actually in the 680. So I've cut out all my pieces and this is my little practice piece and I'm just, you take the bond web off the back and if you're struggling to get it off the back, you can just, with a pin, or it will come apart like that and then you can put that on your fabric. So this is a practice one. Mm -hmm. So again, I've taken the bond web paper off the back and then with your iron, just hold that over the top, a dry iron again. And These that mini irons are handy oh, for applique projects actually, aren't they? Definitely, definitely. So you hold that over until you're happy that everything's adhered in place. Okay. Um, shall I move on to the actual cushion? I think yeah, I'll. Perhaps. Okay. So move all of these out of the way. 
So I've got all my pieces. We've had a message from Helen. Helen Newton. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Helen. Helen. Morning, Karen. Vicky, I'm so happy to have my designs on your show and loving the demo. Sending a big hug to you both from Helen. Thank Lots you. of love. Thank, thank you, you thank message. You. Oh, we love Helen. I haven't met her. I've only messaged her and everything. So it'll be so nice oh, one day when yes. we can get together. Oh, I know. Can't wait till we can all <laughs> go for a, yeah, have a party. <laughs> we'll all have a party. Oh, just a cup of coffee would be nice, wouldn't oh, it? A coffee and a chat yeah. and a bit of stitching would yeah. be really, really nice. Absolutely. So I've gone through and I've um, had all my templates. I've traced them all off onto my bond web. I've cut them out roughly. Then I've um, put them onto the fabric that will um, has the labels, so it tells you exactly which fabrics. But you don't have to follow that. You can do your own thing. And if you bought the pattern on its own, you can choose your own fabrics. So we've done all the preparation. And then you'll take all your bond web pieces and take the paper off the back. So to save time, I've taken the paper off the back already, except for just a couple of the little things so you would cut out and, and prepare them all first yes before you sort of yes put your seam together yes um also for the scissors there is a, just a little bit of the gray and then um i've just curved the edge so that will go over the top mm -hmm. of the actual scissors but there's also handles so you'll draw that on your template and then when you've cut out your um, template properly, you'll actually then go, I don't know if these are going to be sharp enough, might have to get my other scissors. And you'll cut round the handles. Like kit that. is very, very, very popular, just so you know. Remember, in the kit, you get your instructions, you get your panel, you get half a metre of rows and you get a fat quarter for less than £20 brilliant value for money you could do this as um i'm thinking you could frame it and have it as a wall hanging you know on the wall of your your sewing room as well couldn't you you definitely can you can make it into a bag, bag? Yeah. yeah yeah there's enough fabric in there um to make a bag you might need to get fabric for the lining um but there's definitely enough fabric for the actual structure of a bag and um you know you could do box bottoms and have a, a panel oh, down yeah. the side and everything so Put all your sewing in there. So I just cut those out on the scissors and then I can peel the back off there. Right, okie dokie. So the next stage is actually laying this up. Is there a template, uh, uh, sort of, it, or do you go by the picture, I, I go, suppose? I went by the picture. Picture on the front. Yeah. And um, let me put that there. So I, I mean, the there's table. nothing to say. You can't play around with the design and, and, and put it wherever you want. So um, the whole idea about laying your pattern out first before you actually iron it on is to make sure that you're happy with the layout and everything. So I actually followed um, as closely as I could the um, design on the front of the pattern, which was great. Um, so we'll start with, I think we'll start with the, I'm just, Remind myself, um, start with the two shelves to make sure they're horizontal and leave enough space between them for the sewing machine to fit and the cotton reels too. You hear this, Elliot, this is your <laughs> DIY tips, make sure the shelves are straight. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to just pop that on there. Jill's asked to see the panel, it's this one, Jill. And you get so many different prints beautiful complementing colours uh, they all look amazing and they're all labelled they are all labelled so you can um, keep them all together and you know that you've got plenty more than enough to be able to in fact look this one's just labelled extra fabric how good's that that plus your half metre and your fat quarter and your instructions and all your templates 19.99 thank you very much for your message so we're going to just start laying things out and don't worry about things moving slightly because when you actually come to um, iron this on, you can just take your time. And you lie all this and, and lay it all out on your ironing board as well. Yes, I yes. did it once all <gasps> on my dining room table and thought, oh, 
I'm not really happy <laughs> with that position. How am I going to get over there to the iron? So, well, these pressing mats are good, actually. The, the pressing mats are ideal, and um, this is just wonderful, sort of playing around with, you know, how you're going to lay it out. So we've got a lovely bow there. I'm hoping that you can see all of this. Um, the knitting needles, which are amazing. And then oh. the balls of yarn. So we'll pop. And, you know, I'm using the picture and just looking at uh, and why you do your edge around the design is that a number of the actual little applique elements overlap the edge. So we'll just carry on there. I've got another ball there. Another one in here. And this is where you can overlap slightly. Turn that round. And then this one goes just underneath there. Ah, this is why it's good not to press it all down, because yep. you've got some that are overlapping. Yeah. And then we've got the end of the knitting needles just coming there. When you're happy with a section and it doesn't relate to other parts, what you can do, so when I've done the um, knitting needles, I'm actually going to press those in position because I'm going to move the panel down. You can see the knitting needles just overlap slightly. That's a longer one. So we just pop the knitting needle under the ball of yarn there. It's really fun, isn't it? I mean, there's something... It's just it's, so good. There's, yeah, there's just so many different elements to it. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, if you've got an applique mat, yeah. um, you can actually use that, or I've used um, baking parchment. So I'm just going to pop that over the top of that and in fact I'll include the bow. I'm not going to press the shelf yet because I want to be sure that there's enough space for the cotton reels and everything. And then you'll press this into position. If you haven't got baking parchment or the applique mat, don't worry, as long as you've got a clean iron, mm -hmm. you can actually just use the iron straight onto the fabric. This is to be extra careful that you don't yes. get glue on your iron. Yeah. Okay, so we have just... I can go over that later, but I just want to put it in position so that when I move the actual panel... I'm going to move that over slightly. So, I'm just going to move that up. So those are starting to be adhered there. So then we've got the cotton reels. So you've got the base of the cotton reels. And I'm just going to start with one of them because I want to make sure that there's enough space above the shelf. But it's your interpretation. It's your design. So it's your chance to sort of play around yeah, with the layout and everything. It. Well, I thought this would be a really nice one to personalise and you could put Cara's sewing room and you could yes. put... Yes, Helen's sewing room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. bits and bobs oh. and you can, yeah, absolutely personalise it. So, quite happy that that's okay. So we'll carry on with the, um, the cotton reels. So the Paper's already been taken off the back. That's one thing that I would advise you to do is take your paper off the back before you start laying out. So we'll just pop that underneath there. Another one over the top. They're just about joining. They're nice springy colours, aren't they, Oh, Cara? they're beautiful, so beautiful. Isn't it wonderful at the moment? You can hear the birds singing oh, outside. I know. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's just so nice, and all the bulbs are starting to come up. It just makes you feel better. And all these pretty fabrics. Are you good at gardening? Um, like gardening? I'm not, but my husband is. He's like a, a big, big gardener. We have an allotment. There you go. We've got a cushion for each of you today, then. Yeah, definitely. That's what I thought when I saw it. He has. Um, He's got an allotment. An so allotment. Is it, what, what's, is it at the moment? Is there nothing really growing? No, 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 no. He's got loads on there. Really? Yeah. He's got loads on there at the moment. We're still, what are we um, picking? Um, cabbage, leeks, parsnips, um, kale, um, 
can't remember what else. Gosh, yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, which is lovely. Really, really nice. We're so lucky. So lucky. That's so good. So do you always have your nice Sunday roast dinners? Lots of vegetables. Yeah. Oh, that sounds <laughs> so nice. Right, I'm just that shelf is just getting a bit wonky there, Elliot. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your pin cushion. So there's plenty of space there. I'm quite happy with that. Um, so rather than move it around anymore, I'm actually going to just iron that on. Just so you know, the pattern on its own completely sold out. Um, the kit, about half the stock is completely gone. Um, well done. We started with hundreds of these. So I'm quite happy with the position of the shelf. And I'm going to just press that in position. On the um, pin cushion, you'll notice that there are some pins and you can use from Jewellery Maker um, yeah. little seed beads. Oh, good idea. Um, you know, for the, the heads of the pins. Oh, do you know what? Yeah, this would be really nice to embellish even more. Like you said, beads. Yes. You could put some buttons on, couldn't yes, you? Yes, definitely, buttons. definitely. So, again, going back to my picture. I'm quite happy with that position there. The press email that Cara's using is the June Taylor Cut and Press. It's out of stock at the moment. Um, who is that that asks? Tricia, sorry Tricia, it's out of stock at the moment. We're desperate to get it back. Um, I don't know whether there's other pressing mats that are on the, I don't know if we've got any on the website at the moment. Bear with us, we are looking at getting some more back in. And Pat, yes, a big sewing street get together does sound amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, with cake, I'm there, I'm there, absolutely. <laughs> with babe. Oh yeah, with little babe. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm just going to move the um, sewing machine over slightly. And these are bolts of fabric or your stash or quilts that you've made. Yeah. Um, oh, wouldn't that be lovely if you actually oh. use some of the fabric that you've used before for some of your um, projects? Good idea. So that one's going on the bottom. And then that one. And all the um, detail is actually added with the free motion later. That's it. I think that's when it really comes to life. Hence why you said use a dark thread. It yeah. really makes it all sort of pop, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. So you can overlap these slightly. And then you're just stacking that up. Until you get to the top. Okay. Sewing machine, I'm happy with that. Yeah, the shelf, I'm happy with. So I'm going to press that in position. As I say, if I don't get a chance to do the free motion, much free motion in this hour, I will We're prepare. We're going to focus on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to prepare the potting shed so I can go straight to the um, machine. Then we oh, have. That's 15 minutes, Cara. Yeah, lovely. Then we have, um, there's a tiny, I bet I've lost it. Nope. Tiny little sewing cotton. Oh, I suppose you've got to keep track of all these little pieces, yes. haven't you? <laughs> and that's just for the reel on top of the sewing machine. I'm not going to use the pressing mat. It's just a little piece there. We've had lots of lovely pictures coming through. We'll have to have a look through Ooh, those yes. of the Helen Newton cushions Ooh, that lovely. people have been making. Especially as Helen's watching. Yes, yeah, definitely. Them. Have you put them into a slideshow yet, Kat? Oh, yeah, let's have a look. Oh, yes. Uh, this is Julie. Hi, I've made two of Helen's cushion designs. Oh, gorgeous. I love them. Look the two that we're doing yeah. today. Oh, fantastic. Well Julie, done, Julie. Them. Oh, they look great, don't they? Really nice. I love the um, choice of fabrics. Oh, yeah, the Paisley one. Wellies were yeah. really nice, weren't they? This is Jackie. Right, Jackie's used Tilda. <gasps> I made the potting for, uh, shed for a cushion who loves gardening. Great gifts, aren't they? For, Beautiful. For people, and yeah. as you say, you can real, really personalise them. That was so, so nice. So lovely oh. to see. Oh, look. One of Vicky and Cara, I've made quite a few of Helen's designs. Uh, made one into a quilt for my mom. Oh, lovely. As she likes to sit in the conservatory and look at the garden. This is a really good idea. Yeah. Because actually, you, we talk about these as a cushion. This could be a central block of a quilt. Definitely. Yeah, I love what you've done Definitely. there, Fiona. 
They're amazing. Thank you for all of your oh, pictures. Oh, fantastic. Keep them coming in. Keep them coming yes, in. Yes, definitely. So I've ironed everything on there. So I'm just going to put the buttons on the bottom here. So there's some heart buttons and round buttons. So I'm just popping those on the edge of the, um, the panel. As I say, you can see that those overlap the edge, which is nice. And once you've got the templates from the instructions, I mean, you could put it onto a little pinny, mm -hmm. onto an apron. You've got those templates there that you could use again to over and over bags. And the practice piece, you know, I thought, oh, you know, that's nice, do a practice piece. But you could actually cut those out and make them into a card. Oh, gorgeous idea. Yeah, it would yeah. be really nice. So the buttons are all held in position. And then we've even got a needle threader and some uh, beautiful, like pink, um, oh, yeah, safety, safety pins. pins. With little hearts on. So the needle thread is just going to go there. Kate is messaged in, so morning, lovely show. I made the bear's cushion and really oh, enjoyed it. Lovely. She says, I'm going to make this one for my friend's um, craft room as well. Fantastic. Oh, those bears, the bear ones were lovely and the puppy ones for those who were yeah. able to get them. Right. And I really like the fact that, you know, there's, some, there's a bit of everything. There's a bit of variety. If anyone, you know, if we're just a bit bored or maybe if you've lost your sojo a bit, it's nice that you can do lots of cutting, lots of positioning. It, there's so many different sort of elements to applique cushions like this. Definitely. So I think that's everything in position. So although I use the sheet, I'm just going to go over it and just make sure that everything has adhered. Because there'd be nothing worse than picking it up and moving it over to the machine. Right, one of the things that I, not, I was a bit apprehensive, I think that's the wording I want to use. I was a bit apprehensive about, don't need the iron anymore. Ooh. Of that um let me that was the so um nice, isn't it? The, yeah it's just lovely like that yeah. isn't it um was the balls of yarn so i've actually done one here so again this is practice. something this is really good to practice with so that was my practice one before i actually did it on the main piece where did you stitch then do you go round and then how so do you... what Ah, Helen has included the lines. is the lines. So with any of these items, you can then go on afterwards and actually with a friction pen, and this is when you can have your friction pen, that's why I put the iron away and the ironing board away so I'm not tempted to actually iron anything. So with the friction pen, you can actually mark up the lines on the um, applique. Good so idea. What, so what I'm going to do, this is the round ball of yarn there so you'll do a curved line so the friction pens are perfect for this and this is just a guide don't feel that you've got to follow it exactly and then do some lines there see I've done mine slightly differently um, I'm going to do completely different <laughs> I want to show you, you know, that you can put your own slant on something. So. Oh, yeah, you could do this in different coloured threads even. You can, you? Yeah. yeah, you can. Amanda, we haven't done the potting shed yet. Don't worry, it's on pre-order <laughs> though. She says, I've just got the sewing room cushion. Has the gardening one sold out? The gardening one's coming up at 11 o'clock. It is on the website. It's not sold out yet. You can still get it on pre-order. We haven't demoed it yet though. Don't worry, Amanda. So on the cotton reels, you can use your friction pen and do some lines there. You can have them long and short just to give the, it just gives a three dimensional effect. And what I love is Helen says, just get carried away, yeah. you know, do your own thing. Good you idea. don't have to do exactly. Um, so round the mannequin here. And it's only in a friction pen. So if you don't follow those exactly. lines completely, it doesn't exactly. matter, they'll disappear. Yeah. I like the fact that with the spools that they've given you stripy fabric as well, it, it, there's a lot of thought gone yes. into the different prints and where yep. to use them. So I found that even just going around the bottom, the legs of the mannequin, it helped me 
and it might help you to get the lines. Um, with the blankets, you want sort of like a, la a line going across, not all the way, but to show that you've got a fold there. Right, so you carry so on. So you would draw all those on first. You draw all you those on first, you know, just go through and it just helps you. It's like with the um, safety pins there. You can actually um, go around, even go around. And especially if you've got a fabric where it's light against the background, I found that it was a lot easier to actually draw the friction lines. And then you've got your safety pin coming out like that. Oh, right. So they're all stitched, yes. aren't they? Yes, yeah. So do your heart there. Then got a bit of a wonky one but that's fine um, so carry on doing that especially around the machine and if you want a right-handed sewing machine then don't put the the um the dial the dial it. on it um, a lot of the modern ones don't have the, no. the dial they have them on the end so um you can actually oh, you can put your little computer screen on there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your lcd touch screen <laughs> but carry on doing that so what i'm going to do is actually just do a bit of free motion around the, um, the ball of yarn. And what you're going to do is actually sew around the edge twice, mm -hmm. and then you do the lines, and you do the lines twice as well. So we'll come over to the machine, move everything out of the way. So when you're free motioning, the main thing you need to do is, is drop your feed dogs, yep. because you're in control of the speed of it, yes. aren't you? Yes, um, for the other, um, the teddy bear one, the cushion, we did go through and show people what that means by okay. dropping the feed dogs. Um, I don't know if I can do it here. Oh, so, so this is when our, our new director, Emma, was like, you're having me yeah. on here. <laughs> Feeding the dogs. <laughs> so I've got the feed dogs. Right. It's tell it, I love this machine. It's saying you can't do anything because you haven't put your, your lever down. <laughs> so you can see there, let's get the needle up, the feed dogs are up. Okay. Okay? Yeah. If you put the feed dogs down... There's normally a button either on the side yeah. or at the back of your Mine's machine. Mine's at the back of my yeah. machine there. If you put the feed dogs down, did you see that they I went did. down? Yeah. So they're down now. So what they're allowing you to do is actually you're in control of the fabric. Right. Now... I didn't know the difference and I still am a bit unsure because in my machine there's a couple of different feet that come with it and there's ones that are like hopping or they've got yeah. like springy ones. So, so what I'm going to do is in the second hour we'll talk through all that. is talk Great. through all of that. Thank you. This one is a darning foot for darning. this particular one and it actually does move up and down. Right. Okay. And it will come quite close to the fabric. Um, so although you're in control of it, I wouldn't have your speed up too quickly right? because it can sort of like judder. Okay. Um, but there are other feeds included with this machine and maybe with your machine at home that will allow you to have a bit more freedom when right. you're working on it. So I'm just going to go round. So the other thing that I found was easier for me was I've got my foot down and then with the reel at the end, you can see, I hope, that when I move that, this oh, yeah. actually moves up and oh, down. Oh, yeah, it's hopping, yeah. Okay, so it will hop. Okay. It will go over. So, Is there a good place to start my free motion? Do you always start in a certain place you know like when you're quilting they say start in the center and sort of work out whereas is there a is it just right starting I think in a less obvious what I'm place? trying to do is I'm going to go round the ball you um some people will actually move their fabric um so they will pivot it but what um I found easier when you're doing free motion is actually moving it like this that's so, what I think a lot of people yeah. find very bizarre especially yeah. people who are used to sewing. Yes. I mean, when I first start, started in the sewing world and I hadn't had much experience on a sewing machine, I picked up free motion a lot quicker than a lot of people who had um, sewn for years and years because they just found it so alien yes. going backwards. Oh, and, it's, it, yeah, it is. Weird. It is quite strange. Um, and again, standing up is a little bit, so yeah, please bear with bear me. With <laughs> um, so when I 
want to start. I want to start near the edge of the ball of yarn. So I found that actually starting by putting my needle close into the fabric, not all the way, but then drop the needle down. Okay? okay. And I just found that easier right. as to where I was going to start because you've got an idea then, if you do it that way, mm -hmm. whether you're near the edge or you're off where you're going to um, be stitching. Um, the machine, this particular machine will actually, once you drop the feed dogs, it will actually go to um, the length of zero, but you don't have to put on your machine what stitch length or anything like that. Well, you're in control of the stitch you length, are. aren't you? Yeah, and the other thing is people say, oh, I'll do it really slowly. Well, actually doing it really slowly is not oh, necessary, hard, no. Yeah. But when I first came to this machine today, I wanted to have a play with it just, and it was right up fast. And it was like, oh my goodness. So, right. you know, you will get used to, and this is again why it's good to practice. Do a bit because of a if you do, yeah. Lorraine said, is this all right for beginners to do? Yes, yeah. If you practice, I mean, I was a complete beginner when I first started um, doing free motion. Um, the pieces are, are quite nice and big. Um, and even the smaller pieces, once you've done a bit, you just get your confidence. Yeah. You know, and I think it's all part of getting confidence, yeah. isn't it? So um, practice, practice, and then, you know, move on to something like this. So I'm actually going to go round. So I'm going round the edge of the ball. And if you set your stitch length, uh, sorry, your speed, you can actually put your foot to the floor. So I haven't got a complete circle, but who's seen a pure round ball of yarn? So I've gone around there twice. Whoops, come off a bit. It doesn't matter though, does no, it? No, it doesn't. It's like, it is literally supposed to look sketched like doodles. And keep going. Especially a ball of yarn. So I'm actually going backwards and forwards. And you can see it's quite steady. I'm not making massive movements with my hands. You want to keep it quite smooth. And if you can keep going, keep going, because it just helps you with your confidence and with the size of the stitches that you're doing. And you can see how nicely, whoops, the, um, the lots of whoops, I'm afraid. <laughs> um, the dark thread stands out against the pattern fabric. And breathe. Actually, the other thing. you know, that's so strange that you said that, but I hold my breath, it's yeah. even while watching you. I'm like, <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna take a breath yet? But you can, just keep going and breathe. I mean, Cara's, laughing she's talking i'm trying to <laughs> her shoulders are in a good position i do some right funny things with my uh, <laughs> my posture so just get yourself all relaxed do you think do you ever use um quilting gloves cara no you can and the other thing is is i found on my machine was make sure that the machine was actually um the surface was polished um, I think there is like a Teflon sheet, and if you've got a table, that oh, yeah, helps put your because at the moment you've got that um, coming off. So I'll bring this over so you can see. So there's my ball of yarn. To finish it, do you did you just you don't need to um, do a not a backwards and forwards. Backwards and forwards. Um, all I do is, um, and I don't know whether it's right or not, is just when, when I start, yeah. that over. when I start, I have the needle going up and down a few times. Mm -hmm. So it's like a locking stitch. And then when I finish, I do the same. Right. And then you can cut your um, thread off um, to the fabric. Brilliant. So there you go. There's a ball of yarn. Amazing. We're going to do even more in the next hour yes. as well, aren't we? Because yep. it's similar sort of principle. So you're going to sort of prepare the yep. potting shed kind of up to this point that it's yes. all stuck down and we'll talk more about the stitching and different ways so those of you that are beginners uh, for example Lorraine who messaged in 
if you're thinking, right, I really want to do this project, but I'm just a bit scared of the free motion, one, have a go, but also we've got a couple of other options. Yeah, yeah definitely. Brilliant. Thank you very, All right. very much. We That's love fine. it, absolutely love it. Sewing room pattern completely sold out. The bundle is available. Way over half the stock is now checked out. Just to remind you, in your kit, you get your pattern, which is from Helen Newton. It's beautifully written really clear instructions plus you getting all of your templates and it's great that it also it's got those quilting guidelines as well um, she's such an incredible designer everybody speaks very very highly of helen newton we're really honored to be able to have her kits on the show so uh, not only do you have the pattern you also get a fat quarter of ivory for the front of your sort of scene and then we've tamed it with a rose which is beautiful it's half a meter of rose so that's for your border and for the envelope back as well and as Cara said it's got a really nice envelope back it covers up lovely worse is if you you know you haven't got quite enough fabric and you put a big chunky because I like a big filler in um in the in the um in the can you hear me Sorry, um, in the envelope fold, in the envelope, oh, I don't know what I'm saying now. You've lost a train of thought, Elliot. Oh, sometimes when you put in a nice big cushion, you can start to see it. Whereas this has got a really nice overlap, hasn't it, Cara? Yeah, it really has. It's got a big overlap. What's nice is I would actually put some buttons and buttonholes oh. across, which would be really nice. You or know, lacy you don't... trim. Yes, like a lace. yes, but um, it's really, really deep. Um, yeah. You know, it's got a fantastic sort of overlap there, yeah. which is nice. So, oh, you could even cover some buttons with some of the extra oh, fabric yes. that you've got left oh, over from the bit, panel, because yeah. there's mm -hmm. loads of extra fabric that you get um, on your panel. So, also, uh, it's ex exclusive to Sewing Street, and you have all of the the, the little beautiful uh, prints and different colours that are all complementing, and they're all labelled as well all labelled, beautiful colours together. And it goes perfectly with the ivory and the rose. Absolutely perfectly. What a gorgeous cushion. But like we said, you can make it into a wall hanging, you can make it into a bag. Once you've got the instructions, which you get in the kit, once you've got these, you could put the sewing machine on the front of a t-shirt, you could put it onto the back of a denim jacket, you could put it onto a pinny, onto an apron. Once you've got the templates, of course, reuse them and, and, and use some of the fabric for other, other bits and bobs. Be nice to make little um, drawstring bags or, you know, for friends, for little gifts for people, all of your sewing community friends. Be lovely. £19.99. pence. Um, so, we've got the potting shed coming up at 11 o'clock. Can I remind you, it's on pre-order. I don't know if I'm ready for the next hour. Troubles here. Rebecca Reed is going to be joining me. She is re representing her brand Amber Makes and they have designed the most incredible tote bags that are designed especially for us sewers. Uh, all filled with lots of lovely quotes uh, and beautiful fabrics and great instructions as well. Really great instructions, so stay tuned. That's coming up with myself and Rebecca Reed uh, before Cara's back with the potting shed at 11. So get anything that you want on pre-order because the next few hours are going to be very, very busy. Plus, don't forget, 12 o'clock, Yarn Lane, Rebecca Reed is booting me out. She says, I've got to do this show today um, because they're doing the most amazing Granny Square jumper, which I know Rebecca has been wanting to do for a long, 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 long time. So really excited about that as well. Don't go anywhere. We're back with Rebecca Reed and Amber Makes right after this. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual. Always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. 
My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. We'll see you soon. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break. Uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well. And then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing, and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Are you ready for this hour? Are you ready? Um, I could hear her already. She was muttering to herself in the corner, <laughs> reading her instructions. We are so excited uh, to have Becca Reed here with Amber Makes. Hello, Hello Becca. Hello, good morning. Lovely to have you. I know, it's lovely to be on this side of the desk. <laughs> I know, pleasure. I said, you're not on talkback, are you? You can't hear no, what they're saying. So much ears. nicer. Don't get interrupted. <laughs> we've got such a brilliant, brilliant project for you. In fact, we've got two. We've got two different colourways. So we've got the rainbow and we've also got the grey. We're going to start with the grey. It's already, by the way, absolutely flying out on pre-order. So today we are making, in fact, I'll show you this way, this way, this way. Which way are we going, Elliot? It's a massive tote bag. I love the fact that it's a nice boxy bottom. You're going to be able to fit all of your projects in on the move when we can go back to workshops and classes. But even as a shopper bag, just to have a nod to our hobby and our craft, it's absolutely brilliant. So I absolutely love the quotes. Uh, Happiness is handmade on the other side. It says, my soul is fed with needle and thread. How good is this? And then, right, I'm going to show you this on the lining. Oh, by the way, I've got to mention the handles, the, the tape measure that you can see is to scale. I do not know how they've managed to do I that. I don't know how we'll Amy talk did it. about it. I have no idea. 
That is so impressive, isn't it? So that is to scale. You've got your lovely label, and then inside, look at this. It says here, give a quilter an inch and she'll think she's a, uh, she'll think she's a ruler. I love this one as well. A lady never discusses the size of her fabric stash. <laughs> How amazing are these quotes? We had a right giggle about these this morning. Um, plus, you've got all of the lovely notions. I mean, everything is just so well thought out. You've got the safety pins, even in the pocket, because we all love a pocket, don't we? So here you've got another fabric print for the lining of your pocket as well. So it's absolutely lovely. We love having that nice deep pocket in there maybe to keep you your phone or your keys or your uh, your hand sanitizer uh, hand sanitizer your, your face covering wherever that you you want to keep there is so much that you're going to be able to fit in there so in this colorway you get your instructions now Notice the quality of these lovely instructions. Uh, they are beautiful quality instructions designed with love by Rebecca and Amy uh, from Amber Makes. And the instructions are so, so thorough, very, very clear. We will go through them with Rebecca. It'll tell you the notes, different things that you need, how to do all of your cutting out. Um, it will talk to you about making the lining. This is a fully lined bag, assembling the bag, adding the pocket, uh, making the handles, assembling the bag all included there, making also, I haven't told you, little surprise, you also get the little mini tote as well. How cute is this? So there you go, yeah, you can keep your hand sanitizer or your, your phone or your glasses in there, your keys in there, that's brilliant. 19.99, oh it looks, so it says, so on and so forth. All of this fabric is in a panel, which is exclusive to Sewing Street at the moment. We are very, very lucky to have exclusivity on this. And it's, apps, in fact, I'm gonna have to stand up. <laughs> it's huge, because I've gotta show you the size of this panel that you're getting for less than 20 pounds. You have so much fabric, all beautiful quality, all the quotes on there, all of the different prints, your tape measure. You also get loads of labels, look at this. So you've got lots of labels ready for all of your future projects, all your Amber Makes projects. Stitched with love, they say. You've got your little applique sewing machines and all your safety pins as well. So good, absolutely brilliant. Um, right, in fact, do you know what? People are multi-buying on this. Kat said I would do exactly the same because I'd be thinking, right, I can use a panel and make, I want to make a bag, but then you could do some wall hangings or you could do a sewing machine cover or pin cushions. Obviously, these are all, these are all designed for the bag. So you can see here that you've got uh, side, uh, the side facing, you've got front lining, but they're all great sizes they're all decent sized shapes you're not looking at tiny little samples of, of fabric here loads and loads and loads going on 19 pounds and 99 pence and i just love this quote i love them plus you've got these safety pins it's just a nod to our craft isn't it which is brilliant first time it's been on air already flying out just so you know don't forget you also get all of your instructions whereas a lot of projects that are printed on panels can quite often just have a few instructions on the side of your panel whereas no with amber makes of course not only are you getting a really quality um, fabric here you're also getting really really good instructions so that's the first color which is called gray charcoal on the graphics there they are and then my favorite different quotes different quotes this time it isn't the same this is your rainbow colour. Uh, we're very limited on this one, just so you know. I think this is not going to last the hour. So much fabric and so little time. Love that. The colours are beautiful. Spin it over. Sewing is cheaper than therapy. How good is this? Um, the inside, you've got all of the quotes again, the ones that we love. The uh, give a quilter a ruler, give a quilter an inch and she'll think she's a ruler. Um, and a lady never discusses the size of her fabric stash. It's brilliant. Now, Rebecca's also done a zip in this one just to show you if you do want to have a zipped pocket, you can. 
You don't have to, it's up to you. But look at the lining, even the detail in your pocket lining is just beautiful. Once again, you've got your tape measure, which is to scale. So cool, so, so cool. Uh, you have all of your instructions in your kit plus your panel. Uh, and once again, just to remind you, the instructions are all glossy and lovely. Over half the stock now checked out on this one. Do be aware as we're going through the demo with Rebecca to do to remember to check out. Don't wait till the end of the show. Uh, lots of messages coming in for this one. Um, Linda just said the totes are stunning. I absolutely love them. Uh, do send in your messages and any questions that you have as well for Rebecca. The panel, let's quickly open it up. Because it's again absolutely huge. Look at the rainbow of colour. I do love, absolutely love these rainbow unicorn gorgeous colours. £19 and 99 pence. And once again, everything is labelled. So you can see the top one, the back lining, the front lining, the front facing. It's all very, very clear what uh, all of these parts are for. It's a beautiful bag. It's, I think, going to be one that you get a lot of compliments on, a lot of compliments on. And as I said, it's just lovely to be able to have one that's dedicated to our craft, maybe as a gift for somebody. Multi-buy on this one if I were you today, as I don't know when or if we'll be able to get any of these left. The bright, which is called your rainbow, just so you know, there's 25 left to be checked out and we've got over 50 of you that have got it in your basket. So please do make sure you're checking it out uh, before you miss out on that one, especially if you do want to buy multiples. And this is what they look like. I'm, I must say, you must be so proud of these, Rebecca. They are absolutely yeah, gorgeous. No, it's lovely because I, I make them up when I come up with the ideas. Yeah. And then I send Amy all the measurements. Okay. And then I sort of give her some vague plan of what it needs Amy's to be. Amy's so clever, and then she, as a year. And then I'm so excited when she sends me back the yeah. file. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. I go, well, you know, they use these sort of quotes and sort of. It's all a yeah. bit vague because I'm not the arty creative one. <laughs> I'm the makery one. Yeah. So I'll sort of say, well, this piece needs to measure this by this. Yeah. And then I come, I comes back with all these fab things. Oh, and they are absolutely brilliant. And then they're lovely size bags, actually, aren't yeah. they? Well, I just, I mean, the great thing about Amber Makes is that um, I make things that I want. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah, absolutely. And when I come up um, every week on a Monday, I was yeah. come up in my well, almost my pajamas you know, yeah. in the dark, <laughs> yeah. and then I bring all my clothes, and I need a really big bag for it. So I wanted one with a gusset, but I also wanted to. What I try and do with each of the kits is try and do some kind of technique. So I wanted to teach you how to do a framed corner. Yeah. So I'll, that's one thing I'm going to show you today. And that's so lovely. Isn't you it, can the see detail? it looks a bit like the kind of attic windows effect. It does. Uh, like a frame picture frame. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing I wanted to teach. I wanted a really deep gusset because quite often bags don't have a deep enough gusset. No. That annoys me. Wanted a lining and a little tote. And I love, love that you've got the little tote. mini tote. And I designed so it so it fitted detail. my phone and my glasses. Brilliant. So we're, my, God, my phone's are quite a big one. Bright yeah. colourways sold out, just so you know. Oh, no. It's gorgeous. We'll keep the graphics in for the charcoal, just so you're aware. Um, and I love the detail that the tape measures even Well, to I scale. just said to Amy, cool you know, you could put a tape measure on it. And I was, and when I got it back and it was printed, I thought, it's actually right. I've measured it and it's she'd done it, so it's right. And, you know, she came up with the ideas of putting the sewing machines and the tape measure and the um, safety pins. So yeah. I think together it's really nice that, you know, she takes a fresh look on what I've been working on for a while and yeah. then she just puts her own spin on it and she's such a talented yeah. surface pattern designer. It's just fab, isn't it? We need to get her on air, don't we? Well, we did for the first show, right. first ever Amber Makes, yeah. but with uh, the whole yeah. the whole corona thing, yeah. but we will get her back. She's, not, your, she's not a relative of yours, no, is she? No, she's my friend. <laughs> my friend. Well, we used to work together, Amy and I. Yeah, absolutely. So. Oh, they're, they're beautiful. Right, so you say you want to go through this lovely Yeah, and also the zip. A lot of people are, don't like putting in zips, but it's okay. nice to have a pocket. So I've written in the instructions, if you don't want a pocket, skip this section because you don't have to have one. If you want to put a zip in your pocket, do this. And if you don't want to put a zip in, you don't have to. So I, di I didn't want people to be put off. So in the rainbow one, I've put the put zip, zip in, mm -hmm. but in the charcoal one, I didn't. But in the instructions, it explains how you can just skip. And even the lining is different for the pocket. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's such a tension that's really to nice. Detail. And also, I wanted that border around the edge because I like a bag where the outside sort of comes to the inside and then you haven't yeah. got the lining poking out. Poking out. That's so it. It's kind of my ultimate tote bag. There you go. And you know, 
Everyone great, loves it. Because I've got one now. But yeah, absolutely. <laughs> perfect. Right, so what do you want to show us then? Well, well I'll, do, I'll start from, from the very beginning. So when you cut out your panel, there are lots and lots of pieces on it. Yes. Every single piece is labelled with what it is, and the label is above it. You'll know that if you start from the yeah. top, not below it, it's above it. When you cut the pieces out, you must pin the labels to them yeah, good and idea. pin them to the top of them. And it's particularly important when you're doing the frame corners right. that if you don't pin it to the top, you might have it the wrong way around. Right. So, ah. I mean, it, it's a bit of a process. You know, okay. when I'm making these, I sort of spend the first section, I cut it all out, I pin religiously all the labels on and then I put it one side and then I start. So they're all corresponding to the one below it. So the yes. side gusset lining is this yeah. one, the base yeah. gusset lining is this one, that's your pocket. It's all really clear. And it's quite and you... satisfying as you're making it because you unpin the labels and you end up with this little pile. You think, yeah, yeah I've done it. Absolutely. There's lots of other bits and pieces on the panel. So if you want to personalise it, Amy's put some sewing machines on and um, different things all over. There's a row of safety I've made great pins. use of the panel. But you could sew those on to the bag. So you could put those onto the lining, into the pocket, use them for other things. There's one label that's empty that's at the bottom. So you could write, Oh, you can. if you it. use like a permanent marker or embroider it, you could write the name yeah. or or something. Or just because there's so many on there, use them for other things. Absolutely. I always keep a little Glad. stack of them and then... Look, you can see they're also the stitched with love, and then you've got your plain one, plus loads of safety pins, extra sewing machines, like yeah, you say, you applique them, them onto T-shirts yeah. or all sorts. Exactly. You can use them for all sorts of things. Now, Great. in the instructions, there are no measurements for the pieces because right. you don't need them. No. But if you did want to make another one, yeah. measure them before you cut it off, before you make it Good up. tip. Good but tip. There are no measurements because there's, well, there's no point yeah. because everything's there for you. Okay. So you, um, if you did want to make another, because I've made myself one and I used a tea towel for the centre. It's really nice. I know, you, <laughs> yeah, my your, tea towel your, one. your bath tea towel is mm, really, in the middle. really nice that was my as well. Sort of, well, so I always have to make a sample one yeah. when I, a prototype. prototype. So I've started making my prototypes and things that are nice. But like you say, once you've got the pattern, you know how to do it. These are all lovely techniques of knowing how to jazz well, up a tote bag. Well, that's the point. It's, it's the sort of the technique. So I could have just put a border there, but I thought I'll show you how to do a frame corner because it does look like the attic yeah. window. It looks like it's it's framed. So. Yeah, absolutely. And the quality of the instructions are lovely as well. Yeah, well, that's important to me. You see, I've just photocopied printed mine out and they're not half as good. <laughs> I, I think it's nice. You won't nice. get them like that because you won't get, get my rubbish ones. ones. I just photocopied mine so that I could just print them out. So what you do to start okay. with, um, I have gone through the whole process here. So you cut out the front and the back, and then you sew to the top of the front. The top panel is called the top frame outer and the bottom frame outer. Yeah. So you start off with that. Look, and I just you can then press the seams open. That's easy. Would you cut it out with a rotary cutter, or you? Scissors? I did actually cut mine with a rotary cutter. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're all, you have to be careful because not that they're overlapping, but they're not mm -hmm. all in completely. You know, because in order to get it all in is then you can't just cut all the way down. No. But, um, I did cut mine out with a rotary cutter. Yeah. Okay. So you sew the top to the bottom, then you deal with these frames, these frames. So look, I've got all of my little labels pinned on because these are really important. You're very organised. You have top right frame corners, mm -hmm. top left, bottom right, bottom left. And when I first made it and I sent it all into Amy and I made it up, I realised I'd got all my prints around the wrong way. So this is the great thing about Trial having prototypes. Mm -hmm. I, I came back to her and said, I've got my sewing machines around the wrong way, so could you just rotate them? So this is why it's important you label the top. So when you make the bag, see we've got the top and the bottom frames, we're going to make the side frames. The side frames that go like that. Lovely, yeah, okay. so all your sewing machines are facing the right way. So in order to make this angle, there's the right side frame outer, which I've labelled. I'll have yeah. to move that now because um, I'll sew on top of it otherwise. And then top right frame corner and bottom right frame corner. So when you look at this now, like that looks like it's the wrong way around. And this is where I went wrong because I had uh, it I had it that way up, but it needs to be that way up. Okay. Okay. So take the label off and then just pin it right sides together. As long as you keep it the right way up. And then put a pin on. Now you need to get a ruler and a pencil or an erasable pen, doesn't really matter. And you have to draw a line that runs, it says in the instructions, from the top right hand corner to the bottom left. So just draw a line there. So I always do it and then pin it on and then you know that one's right. And then take the bottom, bottom right frame corner, take your little label off and place it right sides together. And you can see it all fits. 
and then this one goes from I'm going to make sure I do it from the top left to the bottom right. The prints, by the way, just so you know, um, are the same for the charcoal colourway as well. It's just the quotes that are different, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, yes, it is just the quotes that are different on the front and the back. The lining quotes are the same, yeah. but the um, all the prints are exactly the same. just depends on what colour you've got. Very, so very popular. when you've print, once you've done that, so this is, this is a really easy way of doing it. it you know, because when you look at that, you've got angles, you think, oh, how am I yeah. going to do that? But you've drawn the lines, so... All you have to do now is sew along those lines. They are sewing lines, not cutting lines. Oh, because I always get confused when I get to the sewing machine. I'm thinking, right, hang on, which way am I sewing? So at least once you've drawn them, you know yeah. exactly. And it's this no is confusion. a sewing line. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you get them the right way up. And I do say in the instructions, and I'll show you in a minute, that before you do any cutting, just check you've got them the right way up. I mean, obviously, it's not the end of the world. It's your bag, isn't it? But if you do want the print to be the right way up, then you've got to make you've got to check. So that's really easy, isn't it? Right. So let's unpin it. It'd be funny if I got it the wrong way around now, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How we'd laugh. Oh, oh we would. How we would laugh. <laughs> so before you do any cutting, press it open. And now and look, check. the sewing machines are the right way up. Yay! Yay! It's magic. So when yeah. I got the first panel back and I did this and I went. Oh, oh no! I mean, it was fine because I just turned them round, yeah. but I wanted them to wrap, and then that one is right as well. Um, now, do I? So, have... what are you trimming now? Right. What well, I'm going to get my iron so I can show you. Is the iron? Oh yeah, I don't know whether it's unplugged. Yeah. Just so you know, the grey tote less than. Mm. Oh, in fact. <laughs> Cat said to me literally about thirty seconds ago there was thirty left, and you've now said there's fifteen. If you want it, check out. It's lost. That's it. That is everything that we've got. There's no instructions on their own today. It's all in the kits. <laughs> we needed more, We Rebecca. did. Oh, no. So, actually, I learned a really good tip because what I used to do was press, was cut it and then press it. And when I was on uh, with Sally Ann last week, uh? she was doing a similar thing and she said, always press it first because then you can make sure it lines up properly. Oh, that's good but once you've cut it, it destabilises that bias edge and it goes a bit wiggly. Yeah. Top tip. tip. So yeah. press it open and then just remember to cut off, don't cut off that bit. Cut off the bit that you you know that's going outside. I have done that. I have cut off the wrong bit. So just cut that off when I'm not concentrating. And then you've got a corner and just cut off. Sorry, I'm not giggling at you. I'm giggling at the fact that Kat said we need to watch this show back. Our new favourite thing, Bex, is to mm. watch you back when you're presenting on double speed on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no, why? It's just really funny. <laughs> and Kat's just said we have to watch this Is that because I go really speed. fast? I don't know whether you talk really fast anyway, so then on mm. double speed. It's I know, really Hannah always fast. says to me when I present, she says, you like, you like a, a buffet. <laughs> you're like, how fast can I get around this buffet before, any, <laughs> before everybody else has eaten it? <laughs> Buffet presenting. So there's the right side frame corner. Now, I made the left side frame corner okay. before because that would be boring. So you can see, as long as you follow the thing, but just check it. Once you've sewn it, if you've got it around the wrong way, you can always unpick yeah, it. Yeah, pick it. But just check but it before cut you it. cut it, that's yeah. all. That's probably the best idea. And you know that I'm telling you this because I've done all these things myself. And you're still keeping the labels on at this point? I'm keeping those, well, I'm keeping those two on because I no, need to know. I mean, it doesn't matter, obviously, because I know that's the right and the left, because if I put them that way around, they look a bit silly. Yeah. You see? <laughs> so you have the right and then the left. And then that is how you create that, that thing. So I the important it. thing is, I'm going to sew them on now. I don't know, I'm just always worried that I get them wrong, so I always sort of keep them on till the last minute, and it's really pleasurable taking them all off. When you um, line these up, it's important that these seams match. So right. this one, you might think, oh, well, that's going to be a bit tricky. Right. So what I do, the seam allowance on this is a centimetre. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why, it just is, because I like working in centimetres. Um, is... It's your panel, you can do what you want, can't you? It's yeah, your design. It's mine, so I can. <laughs> oh, I don't know why, I'm just... I find centimetres more accurate, but you could do it as three-eighths of an inch. <laughs> when, more accurate than inches? Um, because they're metric, you, okay. they're easier to deal with, aren't they? They're right. divisible by ten and they're smaller. Right. I don't know why. I, I think also my sewing machine is set up in metric, so... Um, the best way to match this up is to draw the centimetre mark, and because I've got a metal ruler, I can't see without putting my hand there, um, 
draw us where a centimetre comes down on that seam. Ah, okay. Can you see? Yeah, we can see Elliot's that. It's giving me a nice close up now. Thank you, Elliot. Oh, Thank it's Cat. Oh, it's Cat. She's doing close ups. Has Elliot gone to make a cup of tea then? Uh, he must have. Been, yeah, but Cat just said, "I've just, I've just looked. Did he sit at his desk?" <laughs> so Cat's multitasking. <laughs> so mark your centimetre there, just from the top down, where it hits that seam. That's what right. you do. Put a pin through that mark, and just check it's actually come through the seam, and then. Put that pin through the seam on the other side and pull it, push it all the way through. You now know that that seam will match up. So put a pin in above it. This might seem a bit of a faff. It's worth it though. But it's really annoying when they don't match up. Um, and then I've got two. And then let's do the other thing on the other way. There's this really, I mean, I because when I, when I do these designs, I really do think about is this going to be difficult? Is this yeah. too tricky? What's the best way of doing this? Because yeah. I don't want to make it unnecessarily complicated. No. But um, you don't get corners unless you do this. So do that the same thing. Put it through and put it through. And then if you, this technique you can use for matching any seams up. Is this explained in your instructions? Uh, no, I just say match up the seams. Tip? This is my top tip. Brilliant. Um, so Well, I do say match the seams. And then put a pin in above it and below it and it just means that that's not going to be shifting don't forget to take that pin out okay because um if you don't it gets caught in the foot plate i've done that lots of times oh. as well and it sort of gets caught and it's not really very good for your machine um and then just pin this in to please both colorways are completely sold out just so you know oh um the 550 is available, the machine that Vex is yeah. using. <laughs> Although that's really limited as well, isn't it? Yesterday we were saying that this... There was I did put the thread in, though. I did put the rainbow thread Thank you. that yeah. you can have. So now you just sew this in with Brilliant. a one centimetre seam allowance. So when you're sewing, that little mark that you made, mm -hmm. so th make sure that you sew through that mark because that mark is exactly where the... Um, stop and take the uh. pins out. Because I put them above and below, I'm not going to sew through them, but you okay. do have to take them out just before you go any further, otherwise they get caught under the foot. But you know that your mark is going to match up then. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm showing you how to do it so it does match up. Mm -hmm. If when you make yours it doesn't match up completely, nobody is going to notice. It's not the end of the world, but it's just a, it's just something that you can. Well, it's quite a try. It's a, it is a, a tote bag at the end of the day, so it's it nice is. to do those attention yes. to details to make it special. There's nothing massively complicated no. in, the, in here, but um, it's just it's nice to sort of practice that little thing. Right, let's take those pins out as you go, but that's why I pin above and below so that I can sew through that mark. Right. Right, moment of truth. So I didn't check before anyone else could see. <laughs> do they match? Yeah, they do. Well, that one Good. does. <laughs> it's when I go, and look, they match, and then they don't. That'd be really awful, wouldn't it? So let's get my fab ironing board. Look at that. See the Oh, match? nice, nice. It's so satisfying, isn't it? Especially against the white. You do want to just make sure that you... Well, it gives that, that 3D look because I've done attic window quilts before and in order to get that 3D look, you have yeah. to have the angles. And what? It takes an extra 30 seconds just to I be I mean, there is, to... you know, there is another way of doing this where you mitre the corners, but I find that harder. Right. You can press the seams open or to one side. It really is up to you. It doesn't okay. matter at all. So that's one side. Got a message from Kim. Hi, Kim. Yay! Just got the charcoal set. Birthday treat. Oh, happy birthday if it's your birthday today, Kim. Um, love the show. I've had loads of new customers get involved as well with this one. Oh, this that's is a nice. really, really lovely one to start with, actually. In fact, loads of new customers all day today. The Helen Newton cushions as well. Really beautiful. Well, with this one as well, you know, like I said, once you've you will have to measure all the pieces because I'm giving you the measurements. But I, I love these metal rulers because they're so accurate. But under lights, you can't see the measurements. I prefer using that to a tape measure. Are you nice using a friction pen there? Yes. Do you always use a friction pen? Yes, because I love them. They're my favourite things. 
you can use a pencil it's only on the wrong side but there's just something lovely about being able to mark anything that you want and knowing that the um it will come out i always have a, a selection of colors as well oh yes nice especially if you're working with different fabrics and just because they look nice I think we've got them on the website, haven't we? Yeah, the black ones there on your screen, it's just 3 99 I mean, we do have um, some of the broad ones now. We always do, I swear I saw one that was almost like metallic-y as well, like a bronzy one. Well, people use them not just for sewing, don't they? I've got yeah. fine ones and thick ones, depending on what I'm doing, but they make such a, a difference just to be able to mark something. I mean, I know this is on the wrong side, but so it doesn't matter, but I mark things all the time. Right, there we go. So, and the great thing about the panel is that you know it all fits. Because it's all. Yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> you absolutely. won't have cut wrong. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to sew this one on. And then we can move on to the next part. Everybody who gets these, please put your pictures on the, the uh, Facebook fan page. It'd be really lovely to see them all. Um, Katie has said, Hi ladies, please can you tell Rebecca that Meg, Meg backed the Love Magpies, uh, Love Pigeons campaign. Oh, They're good. on Winter Watch. I did watch your show of the Bird of the Month. Yeah, there was a lot of anti-pigeon hate, wasn't there? I was it quite was. upset about it. And the, I must um, say, I'm not mm. a pigeon person myself, but... I think that they needed to be included in you. In you, they did. Well, I made up the um, at the weekend. I made up the we're going to have a pigeon messenger bag because it's messenger pigeon, isn't it? For yeah. next month, that I made it up, and actually, it looks really nice. Oh, it looks. Good. It looks like the pigeon looks right on it. So I'm glad. Thank you. I'm glad yeah, someone's Katie's in my um on the pigeon campaign loving campaign because there was a lot of pigeon hate. Did you have a peacock on there? Was the peacock? No, no, we didn't have a peacock. But we had one one lady who said her husband chases, runs out in the garden, chases the pigeons. <laughs> I quite like pigeons. I don't know. I, I, I don't like that they can't really get up off the floor sometimes. They struggle to yeah. flap out the way. It's, and that's when they flutter too much. I don't like them. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know why people don't like them. My mum, though, she has, she does actually have a full focus. She's had all sorts of hypnotherapy to try and stop it, that she's had a real serious phobia of birds forever. Oh, really? So I think it's kind of rubbed off on me a little bit. But I'm nowhere near as bad as I used to be. But it's just more pigeons now that I'm just... Oh, I just don't like them. No. Don't so you're not really, nice a, you wouldn't really be going to Trafalgar Square then? No, no. <laughs> oh no, when I was a child, we had low, you know, when everyone's eating outside, we could never eat outside or do anything because the birds. I'm like that about caterpillars. Caterpillars? Yeah, my mum has got a real phobia about caterpillars, which she tried not to pass on to me, yeah. but did. And I absolutely, honestly, I think I'd have a heart attack if a caterpillar crawled on me. I absolutely, <laughs> honestly. I've never heard anybody scared it's, of caterpillars before. Oh, it's just the worst thing. The worst thing. They just make me. If I see a picture of one, I actually start oh, feeling a bit <laughs> sick. Awful, awful things. So there's the bag front. No caterpillar designs from Amber Makes coming. There soon, will never then. be any caterpillars ever in Amber Makes. There's the um, the front, and then what you do, as if by magic. Exactly you make the same the on back the back. In exactly the same way. So you'll notice on the panel you've got two frame tops, two frame bottoms, two rights, two lefts, and all the things. They'd be the loveliest wall hangings, wouldn't they? Yeah, you could do it, you could do it, yeah. Absolutely. So when I did mine, I just put a tea, it works quite well. You put a tea towel, in fact, in fact, I use one tea towel for my bag. Mm -hmm. the, the one tea towel was enough for the front and the back, because they have oh. nice pictures on it. Because yeah. you know you get tea towels, you don't want to use them, because they're yeah. too nice. Well, you used a tea towel and an old pair of jeans, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tea towel and old pair of jeans, exactly. So that's the front and the back, so. Um, yeah, that's what I said. What did I? I'm trying to think what I said next. What I was going to do. So now we're going to do the gusset. Okay. So the gusset is, is this that. section. Does it go all the way around, or is that a separate part of the base? Yeah, it's there's three pieces to it. Okay. There's the um, side gusset outer. Yeah. There's two times two, and the based gusset outer, and it's right. called outer because you also get gusset lining. Ah. Because the bag is fully lined. Lovely. So when you do this, you join the sides and the bottom, make sure you've got the base. Now if you look, this is, I'm really pleased with the way Emmy's done this because she's got the safety pins going the right way there, mm -hmm. but then along the base, 
they go the right way. So right. it looks like they're going different directions, but as it goes across the base, you're then going the right way. And that's the beauty that's of printing your own fabric, mm -hmm. is you can do that. Yeah. Th that it works. So when you sew these together, you sew them in a long strip, you sew them right sides together, start st and stop stitching a centimetre from each end. Right. So this is another thing that you can learn. When you're sewing some, a long strip around something, it's a lot easier. Why is that? It helps you to get around the corner. Ah, OK. So Especially. do you need to do a reverse or anything? Yeah, or reverse. So reverse. just with your um, your friction pen or your pencil or whatever, mark. just mark a centimetre from each end okay. or forget and then go back and do it like I did with mine. Um, then you take, it doesn't matter which one you start with, I'll start with the, I don't know which one's the front and the back. <gasps> Sorry, what? just had breaking news. Do you want a surprise? Go on, We've then. got 50 more of each of the bags if you want them. Wow, how did they get those? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, thank goodness for the that. The rainbow, if you want the rainbow, go for it now. Because we've got another 50. Live, Hooray. The one that Rebecca's working with. 50 isn't going to last. <laughs> no. Like It won't last. There were so many people missing out. Oh, you well, that's missed really out the good first news. Time, Oh, your team are very quick behind they the scenes. They are very quick, aren't they? Like you said, this is the beauty of being able to produce yes. your own panels. Yeah, well, we did print quite a lot of instructions. It was yeah. how many panels we could get, so right. that's good. Brilliant. So place your side gusset out to right sides with either the back or the front, doesn't really matter, and then pin it on. Pin it with the gusset uppermost, and I'll show you why now. So pin it at the top, and then pin it at the bottom, and match this outer seam to the edge of there and pin that on. So you can see there's a little gap mm -hmm. in the seam there. Ah. Right? So we're going to sew and then pin it. I always pin, when I pin things like this, I always pin the top and the bottom and then pin the centres. Just to remind so, you, you get the panel and the instructions in yes. the kit. Yes. You get both. Half the stock's already, I think, in baskets, so just be aware. <laughs> Um, charcoal is also on the website. So there's no picture, but go with the name of it. So if you want the charcoal option, uh, that's also 19.99 for your it, panel and your instructions. Thank you, Rebecca. That's all right. So we're going to sew from the top to the bottom, but we're going to stop at where the um, where I've opened the seam. So a centimetre before the end, but where the seam is open. Right. Okay. Bam. So we'll do that. And then I'm, I'm going to show, I'll take it out to show you. So this is just, again, this is just a really good technique. If you're ever sewing um, a, a strip around something like this, you do it quite often with things like, um, like all those door stops are done in that way. Um, quite a lot of bags, you, if you're sewing a gusset. And rather than having one long strip for a gusset, I always do it in three like this because the seam makes it lie flatter. If you've got one long strip of fabric that goes down the side and across the bottom right. and up the side, it doesn't like you don't get that crisp edge. So the seam gives it a, a nicer, a nicer edge. So we've had a message. I think you mean Visaline, don't you? Do you think it means H640? Um, could you put some wadding in this if you yes, want to? Yes, and I would say if you. If you're going to do that, that's fine because it's lined. Um, you can put it behind either. You could then quilt this. Oh, yeah. Which I haven't done because I've not got but time. But if you put wadding behind here, yeah. you could um, quilt along all of these lines. Yeah, absolutely. Just to give it a bit more structure. I mean, that's the fabric it. has got quite a good weight already. I, it was fine. Does it feel flimsy? No, it's, it's, a nice it's got quite a nice weight. But if you wanted to give it a bit more padding and a bit more structure, yeah. then... Um, you put it on the wrong side of here, all you can do in the line, it doesn't really yeah. matter. And because the pocket is not part of the lining, okay. it won't it won't show through. Will a metre be enough? Um, yes, probably. Yeah. I need to measure that, but I would have thought so. Yeah, yeah, I would have said, it depends on how much you want to. And either to use an H640 so you can iron it on. Yeah. And then uh, just what I would do is create this first and then put the whole thing on the wadding. Yeah. Don't wad each of the bits. Brilliant. Quick. And then what you could do is you could sew along those... Um, frame corners as well and that would really yeah. make it stand out yeah absolutely oh that'd be brilliant to see it quilted yeah no it's well. really nice to see it so when you get to the corner i don't know whether you, you need to stop at where that seam is do you know what? i'm going to um this isn't what you do but i'm just going to show you so you can see it better you keep going but for me to show you i'm going to take it out brilliant so you just what you would do is stop here with your needle pivoted down. Okay. But so don't take it out like I've done. And then you turn it round. And now this is why you stop and start a centimetre before the end, because now when I've turned this round, 
I'm going to sew that along there. If I hadn't started and stopped stitching the one centimetre, I wouldn't have that. Right, so you're going to have a gap there, though? No, no, because you because your needle, when you're actually doing it, yeah. you stop with your needle down, yeah. as you then turn it round, ah, no, and then you yeah. carry on stitching, so there's no gap. But if you don't do this seam where you start and stop a centimetre from either end, it doesn't turn as nicely. Right, OK, that's and so really you get tip. you get a crisper bottom. And a crisp bottom is very important. And do you do that with a lot of the gussets? Or yeah, the anything, like that anything that I do like that. If I'm turning a corner on some, on putting a straight piece around a corner, I always do that. Right, so depending on what it is, obviously your seam allowance is a centimetre here, so you stop a centimetre yeah, in. But yeah. if it's a quarter of an inch, then Yeah, then you stop a quarter of an inch in, yeah. <laughs> oh, loads of lovely messages saying, thank you for restocking it. Michelle said, woohoo! got it oh, i've good. just noticed lorraine saying yes managed to get the bag um sharon's messaged in so i'm so happy that i managed to get the rainbow tote i thought i've missed out great show today that's from sharon in peterborough thank you so much um pat has just said hello rebecca he's hello, out there pat. again chasing the pigeon oh is that, is that the same one <laughs> tell him not to so mean it just made me laugh when she messaged in i just imagine her husband going look at that pigeon and running outside chasing them chasing the pigeons i guess i mean i think for gardeners they do eat your vegetables don't they don't they eat like the peas and things right. like that I think. We need to ask Cara. She was saying her husband's got an allotment really into his growing his vegetables. 15 of the rainbow tote bag left available. That's it. 15. Now, just very quickly, whilst Rebecca's sewing here, let me show you the charcoal colourway. Looks like this. Different quotes. On this one, it says, happiness is handmade. And then it also says, my soul is fed with needle and thread. I love these quotes. They're really nice. And I spent a lot of time looking at them. I, I, gave, I sent Amy a list of them. Oh, and these are the lining And she as chose. Well. So she, it's nice because she and she chose her favourites. Oh, it's brilliant. Uh, that's my favourite. So, hello, Amy. Good morning, Good Amy. Good morning, Amy. Because she'll be watching. Um, uh, I think my favourite is a lady never discusses the size of her fabric stash. I know. I had some, I had lots of them. Some are even funnier. Love all the different fonts that they've done as well. And the, the, the attention to detail and the printing is beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Uh, your graphics are currently in for your charcoal. Uh, there is no picture on the website because we've had to rush these through. But not only can you make the bag, you also can make your little mini bag. Little mini tote as well. <laughs> so on and so forth. Uh, Oh, we've got to thank Jess from our scheduling team to get her for getting us more in stock. So thank you very Thanks, much, Jess. Thanks, Jess. Thank you. So look, I've stopped. Stop. This time I haven't taken it out because this is what you're doing. Pivoted do. with your needle Pivoted down. Pivoted with the needle down, repinned it all the way up, put the foot back down and then just go up there. And it's quite, you know, because it's quite a big piece, it's easy to do. It's not fiddly to get around that one. I'm just designing the next Amber Makes one and whoa, that's fiddly. I'm taking you up a notch next time. What are you, what are you thinking? What have you got in mind? It, Is it I, another bag? No, no? it's going to be some kind of, well, it's still in development. Oh, okay. It's going to be some gonna... kind of sewing kit, but oh. a really cool, it's cool. I like it, but it's, um, I'm taking you up a few levels. But it's glorious. It Exciting. will be. Well, I'm giving well, it to Amy. Yet. At the moment, it looks about a right mess because I've made it in odd sort of fabric. But like you say, it's but it will look. You want it, and yes, you I like. actually want it. So now I've sewn that all the way round. If I turn that out, you can see you've got really nice, neat corners, and you can see now how it works with these prints because the side gusset prints now go that way, and the, but the base goes across, so it looks nice. So oh, you really. repeat that on the back. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, simple, simple. yeah. Um, it's simple. Amy's watching, she's messaged Oh, in. has she? Hi, Amy. She says, hi, Bex and Vic. Great show. <laughs> Just drawing caterpillars. No, don't draw Ready for caterpillars, the next, mate. Amy. <laughs> do not draw caterpillars. Amy, do it. <laughs> I hate them. I hate them. I'll tell you the story later about why I hate them. Um, so, <laughs> this is, I've got all of this in order. So, this is the lining right right now with the lining remember i said that i like to have a facing on the lining mm -hmm. it shows up better on the charcoal for some reason um just because of the colors there you go you can see so here. you start off by sewing the facing so you have a facing across the top of the gussets sides so you can see that so you sew them on so when you see on the panel don't worry that the gusset lines look a bit shorter because you will be sewing the ah, facing on right. and then you take the lining 
front and you sew the um the facing on there it okay. just it just makes it look a bit neater and then you sew the facing on on that one so and then you join your gusset lining together in exactly the same way as you did the outer yep. the outer so that's all done and then the front lining has got its gusset on now i've put the pocket in the back lining because i always think when you hang it on your shoulder it's you nice that you now. can open um, and still and reach there. your hand whereas into there. if you've got it on the front yeah you've got to but it doesn't really matter because well you could you could choose which is the front and the back depending on which quote you like the best well, that's it i don't think there is really a front but that's the back why i this is why i've put the pocket on the back right. for that reason because i think it's easier to open it and put your hand in there was some method in my madness so if you don't want a pocket and you don't want to be doing pockets just skip this section yeah and make the lining exactly the same way as the outer but you have to leave a gap in the middle for turning are you going to show the one with the sort of uh yeah i'm going to show how that works so here's two pockets look at them you can put a zip in it though if yes you want. yeah and or a little snap you can put um yeah you can put a zip in that's up to you but you just skip bits if you don't want them that's how i've done it so look the pocket's got all um scissors and you couldn't really see it very well on there can you it's got all scissors and reels on there so you take one pocket piece okay have I no I didn't I was about to draw them on and I thought now I'm going to show you right from the beginning how to do it so we're going to draw on here now this is where your um erasable pen comes in really handy and a ruler you need a ruler not okay. a tape measure for this okay so you've sewn um this you, you've got to have sewn your facing onto your lining because you've got to be ready for it now I've got to draw this to make sure I get it down so it says all the measurements are in here in the instructions so on the back of a pocket piece either one doesn't okay. matter because they're both the same you draw a line three and a half centimeters down from the top and because even if you use a pencil this is on the back so you won't be seeing it so draw a line all the way across and then you draw another line um gosh i don't know it doesn't look straight does it is it me it's probably elliot <laughs> No, it's, it's just, it's, I'm just looking at that, it doesn't look straight. Yeah, oh, he's, he's, weird, weird. we've been talking about these wonky shelves today. Right, then you draw, so this is, that's a cutting line. Okay. Then you draw a line half a centimetre above it and half a centimetre below it. So if you just mark like this. So this is called, this is like a post box pocket. I do like this post box pocket. It's really easy, but it's just, if you take the time to draw the lines, it's, then... It makes it easier. So there you draw that. Now my pocket's going to be 15 centimetres long. Mm -hmm. You can make your pocket as long as you like, but that's how long I made mine. And it's a nice deep pocket as well, isn't it? Yes, I want to be able to get lots of things in it. So what you need to draw, these lines now need to be 15 centimetres long. So what I do is I measure halfway and then I draw, oh, this ruler is a nightmare in the light, seven and a half centimetres either side of it. Because should we turn the lights off for you? Yeah, bit? could you turn all the lights off for me? <laughs> when I'm at home... <laughs> there you well. go, is that easier? Oh, that's so much easier to turn all the lights off for me. So, there, now I've got three lines. Right. Um, and then just draw, you can just do this um, by hand. Just draw little diagonal lines like that. So, the outside lines are your sewing lines. Mm -hmm. That inside line there is, is your, your cutting, cutting line, line, as are those diagonal lines. So... Take your back pocket piece and then to make this easy, oh yeah, you need to, you'll, you will be needing the centre of this as well. And I can't remember how big that is. 30, I should know what that is, shouldn't I? Uh, just so you know, the rainbow sold out again. Oh, I'm so sorry. The graphics are in for the charcoal. There's still a very limited availability on the charcoal. These will sell out before 11 o'clock as well. Um, and can I just say, I know that Bex was saying about the um, printing the panels. Please, will you just bear with us a couple of extra days on that second batch? It might might take just a couple of extra days um, as it wasn't planned to, to do an extra 50. We just wanted to make sure that everybody who missed out had another chance during this show. But our warehouse have been notified to, you know, get printed and get started again. So fingers crossed, you won't be waiting too long. It won't be any longer than a couple of days or three days after. But um, thank you for your patience in advance if it takes a couple of days later. Right, so if you um, if you fold this one in half, you get the centre, and fold this in half, you get the centre, and just mark the centre. Um, and I've 
designed it so that you place the top raw edge of this on the seam okay. of the facing, so you haven't got to do any other measuring. And then just pin it into place all the way around, but not through any of these lines because you're going to be sewing along them. So that's quite easy. There's no, that's not a complicated thing, other than yeah. you've got to do a bit of drawing. Yeah. Now I'm going to sew around those outer lines, not the inner lines. And you just again. So on the line. Yeah, actually on the line that I've drawn. I like right. sewing on drawn lines because you don't have to think about sewing straight then. You don't have to think about seam allowances. Got a question coming from Jennifer. Morning, ladies. Is there any chance of any more mug bags? Oh. She We're said, I've made one in the B design uh, for a present and I'd like to make, to make another one. Well, we'll have to ask if we can get some more of them. Yeah, we need to we need to do an Amber Mates sort of round up and get a round load of up. these kits that we've. we've well, we had have here. promised at some point. We've had a lot of people asking if we if we can do fat quarters of the prints. Amy spends a lot of time on these prints, and a lot of people like them and would like to buy them as fat quarters. So that would be a really good. So idea. we will do that at some point as well. Do accessories and face coverings and things all to go sorts, with all yeah. sorts. So now I've drawn around the outer line. We have got one of the mug bags on the website, but it's the blue colourway, if you want that. It's seventeen ninety nine. <gasps> Do you know I've done what this wrong? What have you wrong? done wrong? I've done it wrong. It's because I'm talking. Sorry, I'm just trying I've done this wrong. What have you done Please wrong? Please ignore what I've just done. Well, it's good to rectify it. What is it that you've done what wrong? What I've done wrong should is done this it? should have been sewn on the right the side of there. Not oh, okay. The, so that's that's wrong. fine, isn't it, though? You can just unpick I it. I can unpick it and do it, but now I can't show you. Well, I can. We're just going to have to pretend I've done it wrong because yeah. it's just talking. We can pretend many, it's on the many, right. How many of these have I made? And I've just it's your design, Rebecca. <laughs> I've just done it wrong. Anyway, don't do it like that. Do as Rebecca says, not as she Yes, does. so what you should do is pin your pocket. This is the other pocket, the lining pocket. Still right sides together. Yeah, but right on, sides together, okay. not on the other side. Anyway, I'm going to cut it so I can show you. Yeah, let's imagine that is ignore on that. the right I'd side. I'd like to say the instructions are correct. Yes. It's just me. <laughs> That's awful, isn't just it? Don't watch back I've today's show. I've made loads of these. You won't have me yapping no. in your ear whilst you're reading your um, instructions. You need to. You need to cut along. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, you need to cut along the centre line so you can. I always just fold it to make a little hole. Oh, I can't believe I've done that wrong. It's, it's because we were talking about caterpillars, isn't it? I don't know. It's just rubbish, isn't it? Because I have made quite a lot of these now, and with these pockets as well. Anyway, so you cut along the line when you're all the way along and then you stop at where those little V's are. But don't cut into the stitching, just be careful. Cut as close to it as you can, but not into it. And then we've got a little hole. Okay. So this is where, this is where I know, I'm glad I realised that before I'd have turned this round. Put your pocket through the hole, and if you'd done it right, unlike I have, It will appear on the back. It would be on the back, not right, on the front you. of your bag. That's really funny, isn't it? See, your bag will be right because you'll follow the instructions properly. I have, honestly, I've made quite a lot of these. <gasps> I did a show with John the other day when I showed how to put on a zip. It went wrong because of the thread. The telly sewing is different. Well, the machine ran out of thread and then the bobbin ran out of thread and then I couldn't get it right and it all went wrong. And I was going, right, this is the show about how to do a zip the easy way. Well, Kat was trying to make you organise this morning by bringing your machine to your desk. And I've, you'd I have learnt from that mistake. I always re thread it myself and have a practice. So that doesn't yeah. happen anymore. Anyway, so now what we've got, look at that really neat on the wrong side pocket. Yeah. So you just press it really carefully. Okay nicely so it lays really nice and flat now at this stage if you don't want to put a zip in you yeah. don't need to you just top just stitch. top stitch around the edge ah, okay okay if you do want to put a zip would in, you do a zip exactly the same process yeah so if done. you don't want to put the zip just top stitch around the edge and yeah. then leave it if you do want to put a zip in just get your zip okay and put it underneath that little hole which you've pressed nicely so it's really flat don't top stitch it and then just Make sure it's sitting straight. You can use a bit of fabric glue. Have we got any fabric glue? They're so long glue pens. Yeah. Use a bit yeah. of fabric glue to stick it in. Nice. Or you can pin it in. Okay. But since I've got fabric glue, I always stick it in. Yeah. It's a lot easier. That. Um, so that's quite easy. I think for a zip insertion... Do you still need to put your zipper foot on on your machine or not? Um, not really. Not really. Well, I don't because I can swing my needle over. But oh. it's if you want to be really neat, then put one on. And then all you do is top stitch around the edge. Yeah, and then brilliant. that's your zipping. 
So that's really? up to you. It's a quite an easy zip way. Once that's in or not in, depending on what you've whether you've put one what, in. What do you put in the instructions? What does it say about putting in a pocket in the? Um, it says if you don't want to add a pocket, skip this section and move on oh, to so completing you, the lining. But you do have the section about putting the yeah. The post and then box it pocket. says. Um, Pin or glue a zip beneath the post box and top stitch in place. If you don't want to add a zip, then just top stitch around the edges. Yeah. Oh, so it perfect. does give you all of the options. Right. When you've put that in, obviously this is now on the wrong side, not on the right side of your bag. Um, get your other pocket. Okay. And put that and um, pin it right sides together. And then you sew it together all the way around. Just make sure you don't sew into the lining and you only sew the pocket. But there's a couple of centimetres above here. So there's enough that it's easy just so just make sure and then you've got a, when you've if it was on the right side then your pocket is all in there mm. so those are the sort of the trickiest bits to the whole thing are the frame corners and the pockets nice and uh, everything else all in the instructions um and even the right side of the bag very clear that's very really funny. very clear <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Thank okay. you. Talking of things that you love and things mm. that you want to make and everything you're saying about Amber makes, mm. very excited for Yarn Lane. I am really. So much so that you've booted me off. I know, I'm really sorry, guys, but I, <laughs> when I first met Sam, well, the first time I saw Sam who's coming on, she was wearing this beautiful granny square jumper and I wanted it so much. I said, could you please design a pattern and come on to Yarn Lane with this it? This is Sam from Adventures in from Crafting. From Adventures in Crafting. Yeah. And because I love it so much, and she's done it in four colourways, which is a nightmare because I've got to choose. Um, so I've asked Fix very kindly if I can present Oh, that. and she's so, such a great teacher, isn't she? Yeah, she's great. And the jump, and she's made all the jumpers. And then when we saw Esme on the Celebrity Sewing Bee at oh, Christmas, yeah, when she was wearing, she was wearing this beautiful, it wasn't actually crochet, but it looked like Granny Square. Right. Someone told me, I think it was sequins. And so Sam has done one colourway specially because we had so much response from from that. Is this the jumper? Is it that similar is, to this? That is the jumper. That The first time I ever saw a picture of Sam, she was wearing her, she calls it her allotment jumper. Oh, brilliant. But she has designed four. So hopefully, well, she well when she gets minutes. here, as soon as she gets mm. here, we'll put it we're on. We're going to bring it Because she's bringing all four of them Yeah, in. we'll all be wearing and them. And they're really good price as well. So oh, brilliant. That's going to be um, fantastic. And yeah. those of you that have bought today with Rebecca Reed or, or mm. anything from the Sewing Street website, remember, you can log in with the same login details on your lane and you still have the only one P&P &P to pay. Um, I know how busy it's been all hour. Thank you ever so much. It's been a pleasure. Lovely to see I'm you I'm only going to always. be a guest from now and it's so lovely. It's so <laughs> much easier. When you uh, put your pocket on the right way, I know, I can't we'll have you I back. Did that. I can't believe I did that. But honestly, the instructions are correct. Yes, it's thank just you. my rubbish. Chatting, don't sew and chat. I'm so pleased that we uh, <laughs> that we managed to get more. Yes, we um, the, the the rainbow completely sold out again. Uh, well done if you got it. We did have a, a couple more of the charcoal, I believe, still. So if you want. Uh, it's still the chance to own this bag. It's again all of the same prints this time in your charcoal and lovely gold colours. Oh really? Oh so we've managed to add more of the charcoal which is great news. Um, they have different quotes though. You can see that on the charcoal it says my soul is fed with needle and thread and happiness is homemade. It's the same quotes on the lining which are brilliant and then all of your beautiful fabrics including your strap which is a tape measure to size, to size, to size. How amazing to scale, it's so good. My favorite quote is the, uh, you never ask a lady the size of a fabric stash. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. And that's on both of them. Plus, the detail that Amber makes goes to with including loads of labels to include on lots of your projects, even plain one there, um, applique extra bits and bobs for you to be able to use on your, uh, uh, on your other makes as well. So, do make sure you're checking out. This is the final chance now to be able to get it. Final call. Check out in the next couple of minutes during the break because this will sell out again. Well done to everybody who's managed to get it. Had a message come through. Also, just to remind you, full instructions. Full instructions. Really clear, lovely quality instructions included as well. Good morning, ladies. I've managed to get both of wow. the bag kits. Well done, you. Would you please let me know how much 8640 I would need to add to my order? We were saying get two units. If you're going to do both of the bags, two units, because they come in metre pieces, should be Well, enough. I can measure it. When we'll I come off air, yeah. I'll measure it and I'll let, let you know, know and then you can tell them. Brilliant. Because I just Thank need you. to, I don't want to say if it's enough, yeah. if it isn't. Brilliant. I'll okay. measure it and find out. Thank you. I will <laughs> let you know in the next couple of minutes. Um, 
Don't forget though, no matter how many times you check out, you'll only pay one PMP all day anyway. So we'll let you know. Um, but the HX40 is on the website as well. As well as all of the other little bits and bobs, we've got some lovely coloured threads, we've got snaps, we've got zips and all sorts. Plus there's still some more of the early bird. In fact, Rebecca, you um, you launched the uh, face covering oh, interlining, yeah, didn't good. you? And I used it as well because when I did a face covering show, I had it and it works really well. It's very, it's very soft, but yeah. it is perfectly breathable and it's all been sort of approved as the right thing, but it's very nice to work with. Nice. But just don't press it. That's okay. not what it's for. No, it's one that you tack in. Yeah, you isn't just it? tack it around the edges, but you then use it as one fabric. But you've got to put a lining the other side of it. Yeah. You can't have it as the lining. No. It has to be the third inner layer. But it's really nice to work with. It's quite an unnecessary early bird, really, because whenever is, we yeah. have it, it always sells out. It is, and it's nice to work with as yeah. well. Oh, lovely. Thank you. So, early bird today is saving a pound. It's £4.98 for a whole metre. If you type in the word mask into the website, then you'll see all of uh, Rebecca's uh, face covering panels as well, which are available on online. Uh, okay, we're going to go and get Cara. It's the potting shed up next. Do not Exciting. go anywhere. Oh, well done if you've got the instructions on their own because they've completely sold out already. We have got kits including instructions though, so don't worry, stay with us. We're going to be talking all things free motion and the beautiful, beautiful Helen Newton kit is going to be launched right after this. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! In need of a crafting fix? There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Hello, I'm Dawn Taylor from dawnstaylormade.com. You may remember me from the Great British Make-Off competition. Um, I sewed my tablet breast last year with the lovely John Scott. Uh, Sewing Street have invited me back again to do a few more demonstrations for you, but they've also asked me to answer some questions. So the first thing I sewed was a ladybird pincushion and I made it at primary school. And my late nanny Jo, she taught me how to knit and I think I got my love of sewing from her. She used to sew on that sewing machine over there. Um, something you don't know about me is I sew standing up. Um, my husband built me this sewing table. It's very similar to the one that you see on Sewing Street. My tip is more haste, less speed. My nan was always telling me to slow down um, and to enjoy what I was sewing and I would make less mistakes. Um, you can find us over at dawnstailormade.com and we also have a YouTube channel and a few Facebook pages. I cannot wait to start my journey with Sewing Street and I will see you there very soon. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too.
Oh, what a day, what a day, what a day. Uh, thank you so much for your company. And I'm really hoping, you know, there were a lot of messages coming through at the start of the show at 8 o'clock of lots of people who were feeling a bit glum and just needed cheering up. So I tell you what, I think we've all cheered up, haven't we? Cara and Rebecca Reed and all of these gorgeous kits. Oh, and Kat said, and, and you're here, Vix. But she said it in like, a, oh, and, and you're here. She didn't say it in the very positive way. <laughs> um, we've had a, ma a message from Maggie who's asked where the H640 is. Right, in fact, what we'll do, bring the graphics. If you want H640, uh, then absolutely. In fact, right, I'm thinking, could you put H640 in this as well? I actually um, used H640 behind the cushion, ah. um, behind the front panel, yeah. just to give it a bit more texture. And if you felt confident enough, you could actually quilt, quilt around the edge. it. So yeah, it just absolutely. gives a really nice sort of finish. Yeah, we were talking about it with the uh, with the bags in the last hour, but actually it's so useful. It is so useful to just have in your stash. If you've paid your posting packaging already, why not add meter to your order? Rebecca's um, just measuring to see how much you'll need for the bags, but we don't think you need more than one unit, which is a metre uh, per bag. So if you were doing both of the Maggie, then yeah, get a couple of units of H640. Right, are we ready? Instructions sold out on their own. Half the stock of the kit has sold out. Um, you are getting your potting shed uh, cushion. Now, in fact, actually, you get an extra fat quarter in this one. It's the same price. Oh, so hang on, you are getting your instructions, you're getting all of your templates. For somebody who loves their gardening, or Cara was saying that her husband's got an allotment, this is ideal, isn't it? This is absolutely brilliant. And when you've got those templates, you're going to be able to use them again, absolutely. So all of your instructions, really, really clear from he Helen Newton. Then you get half a metre of chartreuse which I tell you what, you cannot get hold of this colour at the moment. We've been trying so many times with doing complementary bundles for designer fabrics. And the amount of times we said, right, we need chartreuse to go with that, and it's been out of stock. So you've got half a metre of chartreuse. You've also got a fat quarter of ivory, plus you also get a fat quarter of your natural seeded cotton. How good's that? Plus, oh, let's open this up. The prints is beautiful. All of these colours work so well together. I love the different scales of print as well. Uh, I love the, uh, the flowers for the wellies. It says flower one, flower two, flower, two, flower three, watering can, um, the, the bushes, the birds and the bits and bobs. Yeah. <laughs> Birds and bits and bobs. But it, it does talk you through exactly what they're used for. And they've thought about the different scales of print. So obviously for the largest uh, element of the, the potting shed cushion, which is your well is, use the large scale print. It really, really works well. So like we were saying with, um, like we were saying with Rebecca Reed, when you're cutting out your pieces, just cut out your little labels as well. Get yourself nice and organized pop the kettle on, read your instructions uh, and go through all the same process that we were doing earlier on. Isn't that right, Cara? So you yep. it's, it's exactly the same sort of principle and you would get yourself organised in the same way that you did for the sewing room one. Definitely. I'll go through a little bit of that yep. um, just in case people miss Missed the it. sewing room. Great. And, um, so hopefully I'll be able to cover a little bit more on the um, free motion as well. Fab. What do you need the extra fat quarter for? Um, it's for the floor of oh, the yeah. potting shed so um there's actual just the seeded fabric down at the bottom oh, lovely. There. so it's just slightly different and i love that you've free motioned the lines on the floor yes, as well yes it's like um like the planks of wood yeah 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 or the shelf you know it depends that could be the floor it could be the shelf yeah. so you know it's really good. Oh, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Like you say, for someone who loves gardening. Or oh, it's great absolutely gift. ideal. Really is. And you can personalise it. You know, you can put somebody's name on it yeah. and do different bits and pieces. It's really, really nice. I really, well, I enjoyed doing both of them. They're just, you know, right up my street. Oh, they are. <laughs> just so you know, there's 80 left. 
80 left. We started with hundreds of these, so just be aware. Um, the instructions on their own are completely sold out. And the kits though, the colours are perfect. For this. They are perfect and you know a lot of people have got um, their own fabrics, so those, well done those who um, got the pattern on its own. Um, but the panel is just perfect because yeah. you don't have to go out or try and find the right fabrics. The right sizes. And um, you can make something like this. Yeah, absolutely. Right, where, so where do you want to start? Um, I'll just go through briefly, as I say, um, what you do with the actual um, pattern and everything. So as Vic said, you sit down, read it through, have a coffee. Um, then you've got all your motifs. So what you'll do is um, with the Bondaweb, so we recommend Bondaweb on this, um, is trace your actual items onto the Bondaweb. So I've just done a few little extra ones here. And um, what I wanted to do was just, I'll cut the plant pot out. So still one packet going to be enough for this? One packet's perfect, absolutely perfect. You'll have some left over. And so you'll draw around the motif and then you'll cut it roughly out of the bond web. Just £2.99 for your pack, you can see it on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> and the top of the pot is slightly different from the bottom, so you want those separated. And then what you'll do is you'll choose your fabric, and I had lots of bits and pieces left over, which was really nice. So I'm just going to choose a couple of um, pieces for your bits and bobs. <laughs> um, the birds and bits and bobs. Yeah. So I'm going to do a blue pot, so I thought that would be quite nice. So you'll take your bond web, there's paper on the one side, and then there's sticky on the other, and you'll place that on the wrong side of your fabric, and then the rim of the plant pot I'm going to do in this lovely little checked fabric, and you just want to pop that there, make sure that um, you don't want the bond web to go onto your ironing mat. Mm -hmm. What you can do is use baking parchment, um, to protect your ironing board, but for this purpose, I'm just going to go straight. Oh, she's going to be a rebel. I know, terrible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there was a lady who sent in a photograph earlier on of uh, this cushion that she'd made. She did it with Tilda fabrics, and oh. she actually fussy cut the pots. Can oh, you see? gorgeous! All the different prints. Oh, beautiful. I didn't notice that first time. Yeah, this is what I love about these sort of cushions is that you look at it and you see different elements each time you look at uh, each time you look at it, don't you? Definitely, um, and you can just get as creative as you like. I think that's what the beauty is: is once you've got your confidence, you can sort of, um, you know, create lots of different elements to it. Mm -hmm. You know, I I thought about adding a few more flowers around the border and things like oh, that. Lovely. So. You cut your, um, now you cut this out, and I tend to use, if I've got a good pair of sharp paper scissors, rather than usual fabric scissors. Now the rim of the pot is a little bit bigger than the actual pot itself, so you can trim that down. And I'm just going to do this. So I used a crayon, because a crayon's quite a nice thick um, item to draw around the shape and you just cut that out. Then you take the paper off the back and you're left with your fabric with the glue on one side and the fabric on the other. And then you pop that. Now I'm doing this onto a spare piece of um, fabric because I want to show you different elements on the um, machine. So this is your plant part and this is the top. As I say, you can see the actual top is a little bit bigger, so all you need to do is just trim that down a bit. Is it the same again that you get plenty of fabric in your panel yes. to be able to do a couple of practice yeah. goes? Yeah, definitely. I really, really, really would recommend um, you know, having a practice. Oh, we've had a lovely message from Sheila come in, who's just received her 680 plus. Whoa. Very exciting. She says, I'm very excited. And she says, thank you for keeping me entertained with your tips and projects. That's from Sheila. Sheila, you are one of the jammy, one of the jammy few that have managed to get your hands on the 680 Plus because it has been in and out of stock like nobody's business. We are now in single figures for the 680 Plus, just so you know. Um, 
This is the kit that is available as well. Um, the 680 Plus, though, is the machine that Cara is going to be using, and we will be talking through a bit more in this hour, actually. So if you've got any questions about the 680, get them in. I'm a beginner on the 680, so um, please bear with me. Oh, well, you me. had the manual this morning, I did you? have the manual. Um, so what I wanted to do was just talk through a, a few of the actual you get feet. loads. I know. Loads of feet and accessory that come with it. And have you noticed the, uh, have you spotted the wardrobe, little flap up section on the top? Yes. I love that lid, yep. the little wardrobe I call it. Yeah, where you can Great, keep all your it? feet and everything, which is lovely. Um, no, I just wanted to talk a bit about, um, you get a screwdriver as well. I'm just going to take this off because I am going to do some with a normal foot. Some of the um, applique with a normal foot. And in the um, manual, so it's only really with the walking foot and the free motion foot that you need to get the little screwdriver out, isn't it? And in yes. the others, you need to just, there's a yeah, little Yeah, there's flick a little switch. button at the back. So um, I will need to get that one out. So there right. are quite a few different feet that look very similar. There are. And um, these are the ones that I've spotted that I haven't had a chance to use yet. Okay. Um, so there was a darning one that I used earlier. And this has um, an arm across and that actually, um, the arm goes, when you put the lever down, that will actually move, as your needle goes up and down, that will actually move, so it hops, I think ah, you use yeah. to describe it. Um, there's a clear foot, so you can actually see where see. you're going, which is wonderful, and then this arm means that your, your foot is going to go up and down, okay? Then you have these other wonderful things, and this is, they call it the free motion quilting. And in the manual, there's all the information that you oh, need. Oh, that's good, isn't it? And I mean, I've had my sewing machine at home for 20 years, and I still use my manual. Um, when I come to do something, I sort of think, oh, you know, can I remember how to do that? Mm. So, you know, your manual is your real friend. Oh, yeah. I sometimes think with certain manuals, not sewing machines necessarily, but they always, I never find them very helpful. But with the Elna um, machine manuals, they are really, really yes. good and easy to read through. Yes, yeah. Um, and it is just, you know, taking your time and reading. So this particular one is a free motion quilting foot and it's adjustable. You have an open toed version there you have a closed toed toad <laughs> <laughs> toe <laughs> and also you have this wonderful thing and they call it a clear view foot right so can you put that on top of your yeah there's the a one. little screw i'm not going to undo no, this that... because it would be awful but there's a little screw there if you can see yeah and that will release this part of the foot ah and you can change it for that one so you can change it for the different feet, ah. depending on the project that you're doing. And um, the difference as well as this, with this one, is that this will actually sit nearer to the fabric. Right, so it what would I use that for then? It won't jump up and down. Um, you can use it for free motion, you can use it for your quilting, mm. um, lots of different things, but it won't move so much. Okay. And sometimes I found with um, my darning one at home, if I was going quite quickly, my eyes were sort of, you know, focusing on um, where the stitch was going. And I thought, oh, hold on a minute, I need to slow it down a bit. Um, but that one does move up and down. This one has a screw there that you can adjust. And that will actually help put the um, foot closer to the fabric. Ah, so, so it the won't pressure jump, almost. Yeah, it won't jump up, you know, so much. You don't want it tight because okay. if you put your feed dog dogs down and um, what what was the point in sort of using something mm. like this you still need to be able to move your fabric yourself right that's really um, good but you know that's really good with a machine like this yeah so, all of these feet come as standard with the machine next time hopefully i'll get a chance to actually have a go and then yeah. i'll feel more confident about you get sharing. a walking foot in this as well you yes. got a walking foot for christmas I didn't did. you i did i did and yeah I have so you get your walking it. foot as well included plus uh, a really big extension table which you said before you recommend putting on your extension table as well we haven't yes. put it on today but it's really easy to just put your extension table on yeah. there as well definitely right 
What you looking for? Like the screw's still in there. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, oh no, I've lost it. I've lost it. Right, I'm just going to show you briefly alternatives to doing free motion, and then we'll carry on with the free motion. Right. Okay. So for anybody who who is after this kit, by the way, there's less than 50 of the kits remaining. If you're thinking, right, I love the look of this. I mean, so many people have messaged in. We'll read some more messages in a second. But if you love it, but you're thinking, right, I'm just not going to get on with free motion or I've done it before and it's not for me. There are different alternatives, which we're going to talk through now. In the kit, you have your instructions, your panel, your two fat quarters and your half a metre of chartreuse. Julia has just said, whoopee, I've bought both of Helen's kits and you've given me so much inspiration. Oh, fantastic. I cannot wait for them to arrive. Uh, Arrive. That's from Julia. And Susanna said, I've managed to get both cushions. The sewing one will look perfect in my new sewing room and the potting shed will look will be a perfect present for my mom who loves her garden. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. We want to see some photos next yes. time. Next time. Yeah, they look nice as a pair, photos. actually, don't they? They do. The colours are just really, really nice. Yeah. I mean, as you say, that chartreuse is just gorgeous. The colours work really well together because you've got the sort of raspberry tones in the potting shed yes. as well. They yes. work really nicely. Yeah, they really do. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to lift the feed dogs now. So that's a little lever at the side or you'll have one at the back yeah. there. And this will leave, lift the teeth up. I've put a normal foot on there and I've um, just left straight stitches. So, so at this point, could you do a zigzag or something yeah. else? Yeah, so what I was just going to show you, if you feel a bit apprehensive about mm -hmm. doing um, free motion, what you can do is, and again, I would move my foot, my foot, my needle down, so that I know that I've got it in the right position. And remember, I can't just move the fabric, so I'm having to lift the lever there and move my fabric over. And then my needle's just in the right position there, so I'm going to put my needle down. And then I'm going to use just a normal straight stitch, and I'm going to make it a little bit longer. I'm going to make it like a top stitch, so about a number three. And I'm just going to machine down the side there. Okay, so I want to show different alternatives. So that is just one way. So what you would do is you'd come to the bottom and then you'd stitch it along the bottom there and then up the top. So that's holding that in position. Yeah, see that's going to look equally as, as lovely as well, isn't it? It is. And the other alternative is a zigzag. So again, we want to, um, this machine, I just need to find where the zigzags are. There's a shortcut button, I think, on the front of the Whoa, screen. Is there? Can you see at the bottom, yeah. literally, there's a straight, there's a zigzag, I think. Oh, there we go. There go. Um, so that's just a normal stitch length of 1.5. I'm going to actually come down to 0.5. That might be a little bit um, small. And the width is three. I'm going to come down to about a number two. Right, so have a bit of a play around because yeah. you want it to sort of swing off the fabric and back onto it. Yes, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my fabric just on one side. So I've got it, the um, stitch length is five and the stitch width is two. Um, pop my needle down and then I'll just have a look and see, put the speed up a little bit. So that's a zigzag, it's quite a loose zigzag. I'm going to make it a little bit wider and shorter at stitch length. Oh, Elliot's going to combine the stitches. He says I could do the zigzag to create like almost a shadowed effect. Yes, definitely. Gosh, that is fancy, Ooh, Elliot. Oh, isn't it? A bit technical. So we have just a couple of examples of the stitches there. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it look, will look completely different. Okay. So what we can do is use that just across the bottom. So pop that down. And again, I've still got my feed dogs engaged. Engaged, that sounds good, doesn't it? And I'm just going to zigzag along. You're using the satin stitch foot, which is the F foot, aren't you, at the moment? Yep. And your feed dogs are back up. They so certainly are. Hope that helps, Anne. Ooh. That was the iron. Ooh. It's not on, but uh, ooh. 
Are you all right? <laughs> <laughs> I keep moving my microphone. I'm really sorry. It's all right. Move it's all right. Up. Oh. Sorry, we're just Sorry moving a microphone, that's fine. <laughs> um, so I've done the zigzag across the bottom. So that's a top stitch. That's a zigzag. And then the other alternative is by hand. So you can actually just stitch it by hand. You could do as well on here, I think they do a buttonhole um, or a blanket stitch. Again, Elliot might know the number of them. Go on, what's this one, sorry? <laughs> what stitch are you after? A blanket stitch. So if I go to oh, yeah, the 40, it. so it's mode one, 40. Oh, brilliant. Who is that just messaged in? Sandra's just managed to order a 680. Oh, very exciting. <laughs> I'm jealous. You'll love it. It's my favorite machine. So another one is a blanket stitch. Oh, that will look nice as well. So that's quite a nice one. Um, you can play around with the actual width of the stitch and the width of the, um, the length of the stitch as well. But what I'll do is just pop that across uh, up the other side, I think. So again, pop your needle down. And then your needle is at the side of the fabric. And again, because your foot is holding the fabric, you just need to move the fabric slightly to one side. Oh, I like that. That's going to look nice as well. So there you go. There you've got um, on the machine, like a blanket stitch. stitch, but you can do it all by hand. So I just wanted to show you the different um, different ways that you can actually yeah. apply it without doing the free motion but we'll go back to free motion yeah that looks really good um again i would suggest have a play really have a play and this was me having a play um i'm always a little bit apprehensive and a little bit nervous before i get started and this just settles my nerves if yeah, you like absolutely. and um i think right okay i'll have a go so this was me having a go with different things. And again, you can cut these out and you can apply them onto different things okay. and make different things from them. But there was plenty of fabric in oh, there. Oh yeah, it's not gonna go to waste. Yeah, and this is quite nice. This is sort of around some of the flowers. So don't feel that you've got to be exactly an eighth of an inch away from the edge. You know, you are sketching with your machine really. Okay. Oh, it's very freeing, isn't it? It is, it's, very it's wonderful. Very liberating. If you want to have a little look at this while I play around with the machine. So oh, I'm... look at this. So you've already done all of the, uh, the sticking. Yeah, I've already done the sticking. So I've already applied everything um, to the actual back panel with the bond web. And then if you look in closely, a lot of the, um, sorry, to find the foot. A lot of the um, detail is actually added with a friction pen. Oh, okay. So, so you, can you draw see that, that, that on first. Yeah. So that helps you when you're doing your, um, and it certainly helped me, especially with the detailed areas. Mm -hmm. So, um, for example, around the watering can, around the Wellington boots especially, um, it's really, really nice to sort of add the friction pen there. Right, so I'm putting the darning foot back onto the 680 and just going to tighten that up with the screwdriver. I used to be really scared of changing these, but actually it's, it's, it's easy. It's it fine, is, isn't it, when it you know is. how to do it? Yeah, definitely. So pop that back. Sometimes when you get a new machine, it's overwhelming with the amount of different feet that you can get, but it's definitely worth playing around with them because they're, the, the possibilities are just endless there. And there's so much that you can use them for. And we had the blanket stitch, so yeah. we're now um, going to drop the feed dogs and the machine will automatically no, that know you're doing that free you've dropped the free feed dogs and it changes to a zero length of stitch and um, a three width, but because you're going to be in control, um, you, you know, it's the width of the fabric, uh, the stitch is not that important. I'm just going to pull the thread through. And before I get started, I'm just going to have a little go to be sure that I'm happy with the setup. 
Excuse me, I'm going to go down again. Oh. Right. Right, I've actually still got it on the, let's clear that, on the blanket stitch. And I've got it on a fast speed, so I'm going to slow that down slightly. And as I say, if you have it on a speed that you feel comfortable with, you can actually put your foot right to the ground. And this is quite nice because this stitch length is a nice stitch length. And so how do you control that? Do you, are you pushing the fabric I'm back moving the fabric around. Right. So I'm moving the fabric around like that. The quicker you move your fabric around, let me show you. Is there a right or wrong? Or no, it... it's just what you get used ah, to. Okay. As long as it's sort of consistent. Yes. Your aim is to try and get it quite consistent. Yes. So if I move my fabric really quickly, the stitches are a lot bigger. Oh, yeah. Okay. But then if I put my speed up, I move my fabric quickly. The stitches are smaller. <laughs> the stitches and it, are smaller. Yeah, it's a bit scary. I'm going to wait <laughs> it's a, a bit day. scary. But, you know, there's no right or wrong way. It's nice. what you feel comfortable with. Yeah. Um, but you can see this was where I had the wrong stitch. Mm -hmm. Then I changed it. And then it was quite um, small, the stitches, because I had a very fast um, speed on the machine. Then I slow the um, machine down and you can see it's nice and smooth and you've got good curves. Then I um, made it very slow but moved my fabric very quickly and I've got long stitches there. And then I actually had it very quick and you've got the small stitches there. Yeah, so it is just a case it. of playing about with it. Okay. Right, so on here you can see that I've done a lot of the drawing and um, so for example around the plant pot we've got the lines there that um I love with that the point. shading then you've got the bird box there you've even got a label and if you feel confident i do this at the end you could actually try and machine the word seeds Ooh. on it which i think i did do on here did you i think i did you could always hand embroider you can it, you? yeah yeah I managed to do. Didn't look. Have you done that with the pre motion first? Yes. Well I done. <laughs> so I did. Um, the Gosh, that's really seeds good. There. That's so good. <laughs> and then um, for the eyes of the um, bird, um, I just did a French knot using the same thread as I used. So I did a French knot there. Um, also, you'll notice on the pattern, there's one bird going in one direction and another one going in the other direction. I've got both of mine in the same direction, but if you want to swap them, all you'll do is trace on the other side of the um, bond web. I suppose you, you could sort of play about to your heart's content. You could do so much hand stitching on this as oh, well. Oh, you can. Embroidery. You can. In, in the fact, flowers. on the, in the, the, the sewing one, we said about the beads. Yeah. So that was, um, you know, really nice. This um, on the actual um, flower, is it? On the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the yeah. Uh, watering can. I've got some more French knots there. Oh, lovely. Um, and then on the Wellington boots, the Wellington boots look quite flat. If you look at them there. And then you add the stitching. So it's even got the little, um, oh, yeah. I don't know what you call it, flap on the um, back of the Wellington boots. You've got where the heel is, where the front of the foot is. And um, you, you can just get carried away. You really can. Um, you know, with the little heart hanging down. Oh, we could put um, a button on there. Or, yeah. yeah, it'd be lovely. The other one is um, for the bird box. This is just free motion over and over again so it's used that over and over again and coming down here you've got um the the box that holds the topiary i think it is you've and honestly you've got given some... everyone yeah. the confidence to have a go at this oh. because that that looks amazing doesn't it with the, all the detail of your free motion yeah so it can really, be wrong really it nice. will still look really nice if you do it with a straight stitch or a zigzag but i think really have a go with the free motion 
be lovely. Oh, chat with jumper, by the way. Your it's just arrived. Incredible. Absolutely Amazing, incredible. isn't it? Sam's arrived. Can you tell? We're all wearing our jumpers now. You're going to be nice and warm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> warm already uh, on the jewelry maker website we've got loads of lot of charms of like bee charms oh, and butterfly charms be beautiful especially if you're going to make this into a picture yeah um you know if you've got it in like a deep frame oh lovely you could actually add all the little charms and beads and oh my goodness you can get really really carried away um you know you've got the flowers down the side you could add flowers up at the top here um and I think that's the beauty of um, Helen's designs is that you're not just restricted to what she's um, sort of suggesting. You can get carried away and do your own thing. So, right, so I'm going to do some free motion now. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll do round... Have you got stitch and tear at the back again? No, I've got um, the um, bond web. No, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, not bond web, the interfacing, interfacing, medium interfacing, but you can use stitch and tear, okay. definitely. So I'm going to go down the Wellington boot. And again, you want to, um, I quite like that speed. I'm going to go back and just make sure I've got the right speed. So I don't want it too quick. <laughs> If you do want to go back and have a look at Cara's uh, first hour, there's still some availability on the sewing room cushion and there's now 20 of these left. That is it, 20 chances. That's what the sewing room one looks like. Uh, the potting shed uh, is the same price again, 19 99 This time you get two fat quarters and your panel plus your half a metre of chartreuse, your instructions all for 19 99 Right, sorry, Cara, where That's were okay. you? That's okay. So what I'm going to do is go around the Wellington boot. And again, I did say this in the first hour, but for those who, who missed um, the first hour, um, what you want to do is make sure that your needle's in the right position. And because we're on the darning foot, that foot will go up and down. So as I roll the needle down, you can see the foot goes closer yeah. to the fabric. Still got the feed dogs down. And I want to be sure that my needle is going to be in the right position. And then when I'm nearly there, I just drop it into the fabric. And the reason why you want your fabric, uh, the needle into the fabric is when you do stop, if you stop, you want the needle to be in there. If you don't have the needle down, then the fabric can move. And then when you start stitching again, you'll find that you've gone off you know, on, on a bit of a diversion And there. can you stop, or are you best to do all of the Wellington boots all in one hit? Um, if you can, do it all in one hit. Okay. If you can't, then that's why the needle down's really good. So, right. And remember to breathe. So I'm just coming down the side of the um, Wellington boots. And you see that the fabric's staying in the same position. Actually going around the bottom of the, the boot there. It's amazing you could just sew side to side. I know. In the back, isn't it? It's so free. I know. So I'm coming up. I'm going round this little bit here. Just going round once. And round the top of the boot. And don't worry if you're actually going to go over your stitches more than once. You will actually want to aim for twice. To make it really stand out. Yeah. It's handy that you've drawn with your friction pen yes. these lines in before because at least you've got something to follow Oops. and you're not thinking, oh, where do I go now? So with the free motion that I've done with um, sort of Delphine's cushions in the background, I wish I'd drawn on where I'm going because I'm halfway through and you don't want to stop and you're thinking, ah, where do I go now? I know. Whereas you've got the lines to follow, it really helps. So that's a really good tip. And it isn't so easy when you're standing and doing it. Um, you're making it look really easy. <laughs> so I've gone round once, so I'm actually coming down again, and I'm going to add some of the bits of detail. So 
So you see that I've got it at a speed that I'm comfortable and happy with. And I'm yeah, just you look really go. relaxed. And you're <laughs> talking and breathing. I know. Remember to breathe. Definitely breathe. So I'm coming down across the boot. Ooh. Right. Just need to bend the fabric because I couldn't move it over. So, whoops. Lots of whoops. Whoops as well. <laughs> it doesn't matter. No, it certainly doesn't. So I'm going it's over there. Looks really good. Heel. Coming up the side of the boot and going round that flap and round the flap there. And then up, round the top, round the top, and across. I think there's a little bit I need to do here. Patsy's just said on the, uh, the fan page, um, I have loved both of Cara's demos. I have the 680 plus and I really want to have a go at free motion. I've learned so much. Thank you. Good, 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 good. Well, we want to see photos. Definitely That's want to see and photos. And Jennifer's just messaged in as well. You're inspiring everybody today, Cara. She <laughs> said, Cara, I've decided that this year I'm going to try and perfect all the things that I find difficult in sewing. Free motion is one of them. Thank you for this demo. That's quite all right. And, and that was the thing with me. Um, you know, I didn't want to sort of say, oh, no, I can't do it. I love a challenge. And I think this year is, is my year of challenge. So if there's something that I don't feel too comfortable with in stitching, then I will carry on and carry on. And it's incredible how much you grow yeah. and how much your confidence goes. And um, it's just wonderful, it really is. And the end result is so impressive. It looks lovely, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, I've had a few wobbles, but so what? Nobody I else can't will see notice. Any wobbles. <laughs> and the lines, um, I'm not going to get the iron out now because it will get rid of all the other ones. Um, but the lines will disappear once you actually, um, you know, press it over. So the friction lines will disappear. Um, I've got a white thread underneath. And in fact, the tension on this machine is bringing the white thread up slightly. Mm. So I play around with the tension. I won't play around with this. Okay. But my one at home, you can play around with it. So that you want the um, thread underneath not to show on top. But, um, you know, that's really, really nice. So, um, right, I'm going to do a plant pot then. Brilliant. I think. Yep. I've had a question come through from Sue. Sue's asked, hi, loving the potting shed. I've got one, brilliant, well done, <laughs> Sue. Great demo of the free motion, I'm inspired. Could you use a fusible free fleece and then free motion? You could, but what I would suggest then is um, there is something called a Teflon mat mm -hmm. um, that you can put over the, um, what's this part called? Uh, onto the bed of the sewing machine. Onto the bed of the sewing machine, and it will slip a lot better. The only thing with the um, fusible fleece is that you'll have the fleece part on your machine, and I haven't done enough to sort of say, oh, yeah, you can definitely do that. But I think Delphine has done it with the fusible fleece. Yeah. So, again, just practice, yeah. just have a go, and that would look incredible, absolutely incredible. Yeah. You yeah. could do some of it. Um, just with maybe the um, stitch and tear mm -hmm. or the interfacing. And then there may be certain areas that you actually want to um, quilt a bit more. Yeah. So you can do that as well. Could you, if you if you wanted to, to give it extra sort of body whilst you're doing your quilting, could I put H640 and then a layer of like calico or something underneath? Something that just Just 505 slides. it to yes. it. Yes. So that you're doing like your quilt sandwich yeah. with your 505. Yeah, yeah I'm That's sure. Just I'm some sure. scrap. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right, okay. So we're going to go round the um, pot. So you've basted together that they all move as one. Yes. Yeah, I don't see yeah. why it would be a problem. No, I can't see that being a problem. Um, right. Yeah, because Jackie says I put free, I put fusible fleece on the back after I've done the free motion. Yeah, yeah, that's what I did with the cushion. Yeah. Um, but if you want to actually quilt it, I mean quilters do. Yeah. You know, people who've done quilting um, have got the confidence. That's it. You know, so have a go. Yeah. Right, so I'm just going around the top of the plant pot. Like you did before, it's probably worth just doing a little sample, isn't it? And yes. seeing that you're happy with it and yeah. you're able to move it properly. So going around the top of the plant pot here. When you um, 
come back to where you started, leave your needle in, lift your foot up and you can just snip the end of your thread away and get rid of it. So I've gone round once, I'm going to go round again. And as I say, don't worry if your, your stitches are going not exactly on top of the mm -hmm. ones that you've previously done. In fact, okay. I like it if you don't yeah. go over the top of the one you've yeah. previously done. So I'm coming down, going back up. I'm going to go down again and across the bottom and up the side. And then I'm going to go across and across and across and as, as I said you know if you've got a speed that you feel comfortable with your foot is actually not going to be going up and down up and down so you're going to get, get consistency and then I think I just need to go across the bottom And there you go. So we've gone all the way around the plant pots. We've gone around the top of the plant pot there and down the sides. And we've added the little lines across just to give a bit of shading. Yeah, I love that. Um, let's have a little look. This is quite an interesting any, bit. Th this is it. It's some difficult shapes. Are there any? Yes. That are I think difficult? I would actually have a go going around the um, flower now. If you have got this in your basket, be very careful. Very careful. Um, oh, in fact, four left. Four. Four left. <laughs> That's it. Right. Just going to move that. And I know we can't get any more of these today. I know we managed to get more stock of the amber mates, but we can't get any more of the, uh, the instructions of these. All the instructions are completely sold out. Your main graphic is now the 680. Well done if you managed to get it, um, if you managed to get the pattern. If you do want the sewing room one, it's on the website. Um, and just so you're aware, we are going to talk more about the 680 again tomorrow, 12 o'clock tomorrow. If there's any left, we've got less than 10 of these. Less than 10. So I've actually gone round, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you carry on. I've gone round the flower and this is where you can um, play around a little bit. And what I will do is once I've done this, I will show you, I will be very careful with the iron because it's a small one. I'll show you the difference between where you've stitched and you can still see the friction pen and then when you get rid of the friction pen, what a difference it makes. Do you think it makes a difference using black thread? Yes, I mean, I've used a very dark, um, very dark uh, green because I didn't have enough black at home. Right. It's all right, that got... I suppose free motion, caught. does it take up a bit more thread? It does, yeah. yeah. So I thought a nice dark green up. on this one would be really nice, so... Right, so on those two areas, I will get the iron on again and just show you how well it disappears. Um, whilst I'm doing that, you may want to just have a little look. That's the little seedlings. And the seedlings, you draw a line for the stem mm -hmm. of the seedlings there and you free motion and then you get rid of the... Um, your the line. actual friction pen lines. So here's my topiary going round and I can still see where the friction pen is. And if you just iron, I find this amazing that it just disappears with the oh, heat. It's magic, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm not sort of ironing a massive area because I don't get, want to get rid of the other bits. But then that shows you how well it sits and I'm going to do the Wellington boots now. I like that it all sort of bends over into the border as well. Yes. You could put some birds in the border, you could put extra hearts in the border. 
It's up to you. I think even though everybody's got the same kit and even though the suggestions are on the panel of telling you where to use the fabrics, I still think everybody's going to put their own spin on it, They Cara. definitely will. And even just in the layout, you know, this layout will be slightly different to the one that I've got there. Um, just because, you know, as you're doing it, you know, it just sort of does change. So, um, right, let me have a little think on what else. I might do the um, hole in the bird box. Oh, yeah, that would be good. That would be good. We've got about five minutes left yep. with you, Cara. Um, Jackie, who sent in the photograph earlier on, she said she put the fusible fleece on after free motion yes. as well. Yes, yeah. So the, the hole in the bird box there, you've got your free motion still, you've got your needle down, and then you'll just do circles. And you'll just go over and over and over again. So it's a little bit like satin stitch. And you could do a satin stitch, but I like the idea that you've got a circle. Just keep going round and round yep. until you fill the gap. Not done it completely, but at least it will give you an idea. So there you go. So that's going round and round. Um, as I say, French knots. Oh, um, the feet of the birds are just straight stitches in the friction pen. So again, you can do your free motion there. Mm -hmm. um, there's quite a lot of free motion um, around the free motion, extra lines around the uh, watering can. Um, could have a go at and doing we're talking about the ones on the floor as well. Yes, the lines on the floor. Yes, the lines on the floor I actually did with um, brown thread on the cushion. Show you. Oh, thank you. So um, I used brown thread because I felt that that you know reflected the actual wood. Um, but you could use the black, you could use green, um, but those are just um, again double lines of stitching. Um, this is the shading around the uh, watering can and ar around the rows of the watering can. The, um, I was going to say knife and fork. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting hungry. Yes, yeah, lunchtime. <laughs> the fork and the little trowel um, are hanging from the shelf and you add the, the bit of detail there. Um, and as I say, you just can Keep get playing carried until away. Your heart ten. Definitely. That's it. You could do it quite minimally uh, and, and it will still look amazing. Or you could really go to town on embellishment. Definitely. You could really go to town. Have we got time? Shall I do a flower? Uh, Go on, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. the back of it is just, again, another envelope back, isn't it? And all the yes. instructions will talk you through how you do yep. the envelope back. And again, if you've got, um, you can cover your buttons. I love your idea of cov Thank cover you. buttons. That would be really, really nice I'm making it a thing and Kat hates it. She's like, <laughs> not these covering buttons again. But I think, like you said, just well, you've got fabric enough yes. on your panel. If you just cover a few buttons, just oh, along be so the envelope nice. back. So, so nice. There you go, Kat. Yeah. Sorry, cat. Yeah, cat agrees with me. I love cover buttons. Yeah, you carry on doing the uh, yep. carry on doing another flower. Um, just so you know, it's now completely sold out. Your side graphic is for the sewing room. Uh, we did the sewing room in the previous hour. If you want to watch it back uh, today on YouTube or scroll back, then you absolutely can. The sewing room looks like this. It's gorgeous, isn't it? That beautiful rose pink and in fact they look really nice as a pair so if you did manage to get the potting shed definitely get the sewing room one as well that is a nod to our craft isn't it it's lovely whether you keep it for yourself to have in your craft room or in your living room or, or whether it's a gift for somebody we were talking about turning them into tote bags turning them into wall hangings once you've then also someone turned them into a quilt earlier uh, we also, of, of course, you get all of your templates which you can reuse, use them again for other projects. So it's really good value. Let's watch Cara doing a bit more free motion. <laughs> so I'm just going around the um, petals on the flower. I've gone around once, so I'm going to go around again. And as I say, don't worry about your stitches going exactly over the previous line. I like the idea of um, sketching with all of Helen's designs. It's just such a fantastic effect. I 
and then just finish off there with a few stitches and then you can actually just go around the center as well have we got time I like using the fabric that I'd used for the um, Wellington boots because it's got a flower in the centre. Oh yeah, they really thought about the different scales of print yes, as well, haven't they? Yes, definitely. Change your thread, Elliot said you need to change your thread to do different colours as well. Yes, you can do. Um, the only thing is that if you change the colour of your thread to something that's similar to the flower, you won't see it Yeah, you so want much. it to stand out. Yeah. Um, oh, we thought about shadows again. You'd be doing greys and shadows and yeah. all sorts. <laughs> oh, it would look really good. I can't wait to see it, Elliot. <laughs> Send in a picture when you've done it, Definitely, please. definitely. There we go. I hope that's... Um, Got oh. inspired. Oh, it absolutely has. The amount of messages that we've had come through for you, I mean, you've really inspired everyone. And I think, you know what, New Year, we were all wanting to, like you said, just tick off things on our bucket list. And maybe it is that you want to try new crafts mm. and try new things on your on your machine. So that's brilliant. When well, are you back? When uh, are you back? Um, oh, um, 17th, I think. 17th. Yes. 17th. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's us, if that's us. All of our days have all changed now this month, but I hopefully can't even we see tell you what day it is. Oh, we'll see you soon yeah. anyway. Thank yeah. you ever so much. Brilliant demos right. today as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Uh, right, so those of you that managed to get any of the kits today, well done, because virtually everything's sold out from today's show. If you do want to have a back look through the website, uh, please, please do. There's things like uh, the H640, which we've been talking about, obviously the machines that we've been talking about. There's a few of the sewing room cushions still available, so you haven't missed those yet. And there's a few of the charcoal amber makes bags I believe still available as well. Um, now today's early bird special, if you are making face coverings, which I know so many of us are, we've got a whole meter of the Visaline beautiful uh, mask interliner, which is to use, uh, it's really lovely quality. I know I don't normally say beautiful. It's, it's, it's a what, it looks like, you know, you don't, you don't actually see it. It goes in between two layers, but it's really beautiful quality um, because it isn't woven. Remember, even though it's not woven, it's still really, really breathable. You want something, of course, that's lovely and soft between your layers that you're going to be wearing, obviously, for hours. Um, and with the one meter, you're going to be able to make, well, eight of our face coverings, depending on how you're cutting it. But because it's not woven, you don't need to worry about cutting it in a certain direction. Um, it is a Visaline product, and this, this is the one that they've developed especially for their lining in their face masks. So if you just want that a bit of extra protection, you can chuck this in the wash and wash it up to 60 degrees. These are some of the, uh, the, the mask face panels that we've got available on the website. Oh, I've not seen the fun ones. Type in mask on the website and you'll be able to find these. So they're enough to do seven face coverings. So if you bought one of the adventures and one of the fun, then you'll be able to, to make all of them with just one of today's early birds. We also have it by the half meter. You can see there it would be six pound, but today you're saving a pound because you're getting a whole meter for four pounds and 98 pence. Perfectly breathable as well. It shouldn't be an early bird. It doesn't need to be an early bird. Uh, it's always very, very popular. Lots of people check out on this every day anyway. So do make the most of it. Now coming up tomorrow on Sewing Street, I'm back. We've got two early bird specials. Kat's saying, don't tell everybody. I'm not going to have it taken off me. Kat's made her own early bird as well as the one that we've been instructed to do by the management. Uh, so it's a secret. Keep it on the down low. Do make sure you join us at eight o'clock though. I just don't want anybody to, you know, say, oh, I missed my alarm this morning. Just wanted to have a bit of a lie in. Don't miss it. Uh, that's coming up at eight o'clock as long with loads of tools. We've got tools under 20 pounds coming up in that first hour at eight o'clock. Nine o'clock, it's free motion. If you have been inspired by today's project, if you want to know more about free motion, 
Uh, we've got free motion spring floral wall hanging with Dawn Taylor, who is another one of our winners from the Great British Make Off. Um, we're really excited to meet her. I've not met Dawn yet, so really, really excited to meet her at nine o'clock tomorrow. At 10 o'clock, we have got a brand new Michael Miller collection called Victoria's Garden. Oh, I love it. And Cats put together a beautiful complimentary bundle as well. Always loved Cats fabric bundles. So Michael Miller, brand new fabric range at 10 o'clock. 11 o'clock, Dawn's going to be back with me with, oh, another Beth Studley pattern. Love from Beth. Keep your eyes peeled on that. That could be one of those sellouts early. That could be one of those sellouts before the show. So do be careful. If I were you, I would wake up nice and early to grab that one because uh, it's another new pattern from uh, Love Love from Beth. And then at 12 o'clock, we'll talk more about the 680. I know that we've loved seeing it today and lots of people have checked out on it um, all morning. But we'll talk more about some of the sewing machines that we have available in stock. If you've got any questions, get them in for us. That's at 12 o'clock. Now, head over to Yarn Lane. Let me show you. I'm off to Yarn Lane. Look at this. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, Sam for, from Adventures in Crafting. Uh, we've met her on air. I did a, a, a needle punching show with her and it was brilliant. She's such an amazing teacher. And she's here talking all things crochet today with Rebecca Reed. Rebecca Reed has come in today and she's booted me out. She says, I, the first time I saw Sam, she was wearing these jumpers and she says, I had to get them on Yarn Lane. So she's come in especially for it. Um, they're amazing. Everything is already on pre-order on the Yarn Lane website. The one behind me is selling very, very quickly. This one, you'll see Rebecca modelling one as well as Sam modelling one as well. There's four different colourways. So now's the time to switch over to www.yarnlane.com or Yarn Lane TV on Facebook. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I'm going to be around anyway. I'm going to be around this next hour because I'm starting... I'm doing my knitting. I'm starting my knitting. I'm really excited, really excited. Um, but lovely to have your company today. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Rebecca Reed is going to be uh, going to be joining you in the next hour, and I'll see you tomorrow at eight o'clock. <laughs>